Welcome to Highway to Helms in three, two, one. Another day, another dollar as a holler to the world. I love the way I'm living, love the Gucci, love the girls. Love the parties and the clubs, love the models and hot tubs. Love the German and mirror set on deep dish dubs. Love the tour around the world, entertaining the fans. I love walking through the airport, taking pictures, shaking hands. Every day from me's and noise to crack it open, find a pearl. I love the way I'm living, is what a holler to the world. Wake up in my bed and I'm feeling... You like that song? That song, for those of you that don't know, is by the MVP. You can find him at the 305 MVP or MVP 305. It's one of those two. On Twitter, find that boy. Welcome, everybody, for tuning in. We've got to thank all you guys. The numbers are climbing. Uh, you're doing us a big justice, a big service by helping us out. Almost 2 million downloads. Uh, we, might be, we might be there. I don't know because last week we ixnate that show last week. We did a show last week. It got ixnate. Ixnate on the O'Shea. Shit ended on the cutting room floor. So we can't count that. Ukfe Uye. Don't call Ike May. Whatever he said. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's start off by start thanking our sponsors. Figure4apps.com, the makers, the creators, the originators of the official Shane Helms app. I'm still the only pro wrestler with his iPhone app. That's unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. But it won't be that way long, I promise you. It won't be that way long, but I know pro wrestlers are some bandwagon jumping motherfuckers. They'll now. jump your fucking bandwagon. Till the wheels fall off. Damn right. Speaking of which, never mind. I ain't even going to put them over. You can see on the, on the screen, we already got the title of Highway to Helms with Big Daddy Mike Maverick, Shane Helms, Com, and Dr. Tom Pritchard will be our guest today. Uh, but back to the sponsors, figure4apps.com are the producers and the makers of I'm a Wrestling Fan. Let me take the title down so you can see it. Uh, you see the home button. You see the events calendar. You see events nearby. By company. Find every wrestling event locally. Worldwide and Worldwide. locally. Worldwide. Find the ones closest to you. The GPS will log into your phone and take you right to the door. Wrestlers get it. Promote yourself. Promoters get it. Promote your shows. Fans get it. Find out about these shows. Same concept for I'm a Fight Fan, but for MMA. Not just UFC, not just Strike Force, which will be going out of business soon, uh, but also Bellator and all the other outlaw independent organizations. Same concept for I'm a Race Fan, NASCAR, Indy Racing. This is obviously bigger down south than it is up north, but. It is what it is. Same concept for I'm a Comic Con fan. If you've never been to a comic convention, uh, make a point to go, go to one. A lot of fun. If you got kids, they'll love it. Uh, San Diego Comic Con obviously is the biggest one, but there's a lot of little ones uh, throughout the country and the world, actually. I did a, an appearance at one in London uh, about a month or so ago. We also got to thank HighSpots.com. Everything you need in wrestling. These motherfuckers are everywhere. If you go to a show, there's going to be a High Spots booth there. They got action figures, DVDs, masks, capes. Capes. Capes are making a comeback. We talked about that in the show they did there. They sell wrestling rings. You even get a ring. Put it in the backyard. I start your own promotion. It exactly. has been done. Got to thank RF Video, the producers of the Shane Helms shoot. Stevie Richards actually is uh, just watching that and just uh, text me. Text me moments ago about it. He'll probably text you back tomorrow when he's done. When he's done. I also got to thank Shane Helms Com. I, I damn sure help endorse this fucking show. So, Bada boom and let's bring up that split screen. A lot, of, a lot of good feedback on a new format. You get good feedback from me on it. Well, fuck, anything that has to do with feed, you're in on it. And getting me back away from your ass. Yeah, that, that, that was actually <laughs> the big... So I had to get this motherfucker away from me. How can I do space. this show and get him over there somewhere? I'm going to try to actually put you in that other room. <laughs> get a longer cord for that camera. Hell yeah. But we picked up another sponsor this week, so hopefully we'll get a new camera. Speaking of sponsors, actually, let me take this title down because I want to talk about uh, Chin Lock for Chuck real quick. Let's hear it. New website up. Let's take the title down. Boom. The website, chinlockforchuck.com. Uh, if you need to go to tickets, this is where you go. As you can see on this uh, graphic, James Storm, myself, uh, there's Chuck in the middle, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, uh, Christian York's going to be there, Steve Carino, ECW, uh, Cedric Alexander, ECW. Caprice Coleman. ECW. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> ECW Anderson. I was thinking about his Twitter. Anderson. Yeah, CW Anderson. The enforcer of CW Anderson. Which spells out ECW. He'll be there. Um, who else we got? I don't know. Anyway, go to that website. You'll see that these are the shirts that are going to be What do we do? D draw a double blank there at the same time? Who yeah. else we got? Ah, somebody will be there. Uh, these shirts are going to be available on Chinlock, at the Chinlock for Chuck website. Uh, go get them. They'll be available very soon. And yeah. 
Yeah, uh, you know, Ravy Sky is going to be on there, Amber O'Neill, uh, Jamie Jameson, uh, Casey, Casey Carlisle, Carlisle, who's the new NWA Women's Champion. They're going to be involved. Um, Trevor Cadell, uh, Chiba Kid. Yeah, Trevor Lee, I believe is his name. Yeah, him. I think he left that Cadell part at the house. I don't blame him. Rightfully so. Um, yeah, Chiba Kid is going to be there. Um, Big Eric Royal. Eric Royal is a, a super talent from uh, Carolina Wrestling Federation, CWF in Atlantic. Uh, but based out of Burlington, please eat those fucking mints. And have them all. You're the new yuck. You're extra yuck. Extra large yuck. Yuck XL. Um, the first Rick Converse will be making an appearance. That's a cool name. I wonder the where he got that from. first Rick Converse. That's almost as good, if not better, than number one Paul Jones. Number one Paul Jones. A very talented guy in your opinion, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Brad Attitude. That's another name I like. I always like that name. Brad Attitude. Have you ever seen that girl named Haley Hatred? Yeah. I popped for that shit the first time I saw it. I said, yeah, I love crazy names like that. Um, that's Andy almost social. That's almost as good as um, He Hate Me. He Hate Me, yeah. I like shit like that. Any social, I didn't even know. I what like, is the one thing you remember about the XFL? Besides he hate the, me? the millions of dollars that it lost and the fact that it got me fired. That's, that's it. But I remember He Hate Me. He Hate Me. He Hate Me. I know they invented all those cool camera angles that the NFL stole. Well, with the thing flying yeah, around overhead. Yeah. And you know what I liked about it? Remember how they'd start the games instead of flipping a coin? They, they'd put the ball on the 50-yard line and two guys had to run oh, for it yeah. the end zones. And then what would happen? That was good. He had some good ideas. It was just doing a failure. Why do you think it was doing a failure? Because nobody likes spring league football and no other venture by the WWE ever works. No, but here's, here's why. Everyone, there's a lot of politics involved in that. And, and I'll, I'll explain this to you. And to you over there. <laughs> um, every major city that has an NFL team yes, makes a lot of money off that team, right? Yes. So all the politicians in those cities, do you think they gave a fuck about the XFL? No. You think they want to do the NFL? Yes. And or, Ringo was his name of Or would they want to share their cheese with somebody? Probably they ain't not. They sharing shit. So. Least of all, Vince McMahon. So that was pretty much why the XFL. It was a... Uh, that was a David and Goliath. Uh, How many teams were there? There's only like 10 or 11 teams. Wasn't there? I don't know. Did they try to go into cities that had NFL teams? No, but just all those other cities were against it. Yeah, and, uh, they were. I mean, it's like, you know, they had uh, the World League, what is it, something like that? Because Riley Durham had a team called the Skyhawks. Yeah, I remember that. That was, World um, League football. that was semi-pro or something. Though. It was, I don't know, I think the World League was supposed to be pro. But it would be uh, all over the world. Hence the name, mm -hmm. World, World League. League. You know what I used to love? The ice caps. The Raleigh ice caps. Remember when we used to go to that shit? You could get into the damn hockey game for about like eight dollars. Motherfuckers would what fight like considered? that. Like what level of hockey is that? They were in that ECHL, East Coast Hockey. They're still around. They just moved somewhere. Are they still called the ice caps? I don't know. I know the team still exists. It was so. in Raleigh. The Raleigh ice caps. Before we got the Carolina Hurricanes, we had the Raleigh yeah, ice they kinda, caps. And we had a damn. They kind of shut their shit down. Remember his name? One player. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yes, uh, that badass, Spencer Meany. Spencer Meany. The motherfucker's real name was Spencer Meany. One time he pushed the damn. Remember he pushed the goal right off the damn ice. Pushed it through the fucking doors right off the ice. The damn the whole goal. Remember when they were playing the Charlotte Checkers? Remember what was unique about the Charlotte Checkers as a hockey I do. team? I do. <laughs> what did they have? African American. The probably one and only African American hockey player. The guy looked like he weighed about 140 pounds, and he pulled the gloves off one time and said, Try to put him up against Spencer. And Spencer Meany gave it one of these. This motherfucker here. <laughs> he did the thing where he just kind of spent a couple of minutes rolling the jersey up. This damn ass. Damn, Spencer Meany. Those were the days, man. I used to love that shit. I did. I actually I had some heat with the Carolina Hurricanes well, for obvious reasons when they came to town. But also because they took the ice caps out of business. Yeah, if you want to go watch them play, it costs $80 or whatever. Yeah, you can go watch the ice caps. Add a zero on the end of that shit and you can... Remember when that lady got hit in the face with that damn puck? Yeah. I still have that fucking thing around somewhere. Damn yeah, thing I have. Hard. For those of you that don't know that story, Shane and I get there early. We're in the Dorton Arena. Marking out. Marking out for being in the Dorton Arena because... That was the mecca of wrestling in Raleigh. Some nice family sitting down about four rows in front of us. The building's hardly got anybody in it. The players are warming up. Here comes the puck right over the top. I mean, just barely clears the top of the glass so it doesn't lose momentum. 
this woman sitting over there looking this way, and that thing said, <coughs> <laughs> hits her right in the damn jaw. And they're down there putting her on the stretcher, carrying her out. Kids are crying. Husband's over there looking through the damn, on the phone with the lawyer, trying to get a copy of the will. Shane walks down there and says, don't know what this pup be. <laughs> you might want this tooth that's in it here. I didn't even say shit to him, man. I went to him and said, We'll need this for evidence. That damn puck was harder than I thought it was. Uh, yeah. I thought it was like rubber. That thing was like hard as a Now when it thawed out, it gets a, it's still like a damn, uh, like what a mallet's made out of. But they freeze that motherfucker. I think that woman would agree with you. Even harder. Like when it thawed out, it wasn't quite as damn concrete. That thing felt like a damn rock. Felt like a damn monkey puck. I bet it didn't feel too good to the face. Like to the fucking face. But I'm in a good mood. You know what? You know what happened last night? Tell me. What happened? Big W. Ah, I know. The skins. Skins, baby. No, I'm not, not a big. I'm not a big. Skins. I'm not a big skins fan. Fuck you, man. No, no, no. I'm going somewhere with this. All right. But I do hate the motherfucking Giants. I do hate. Them. And I hate that little spoiled brat punk Eli Manning. <laughs> so RG3 handed him his ass. Bully for him. Low, uh, low scoring game. Things, you know. But man, I didn't watch it. This was one of the few times I actually watched Raw live. I just like that for a segue. Very good. Very good. It was good. That, that shit, good Raw too. Had a little lull. In the middle, about uh, the end of the second hour, going into the third. From the beginning of the first hour to the end of the third one? No, man, not at all. There's really some really good tag matches. There's a really good Diva match. There was some law with the... Who was uh, the Diva's match? Little AJ. Against and Tamina. Against Tamina. Yeah, and I, I saw that. You know, I made my point of AJ before. I said it again on Twitter last night. As an in ring talent, that girl's got something. What do you think about Tamina? I think Tamina's got something. Do you think she's attractive? She's exotic looking. She There's something about her, ain't there? <laughs> I can't quite put my finger on it. No, I was sitting there watching There's her going. There's something about her. Something around the eyes. It kind of and, reminds me uh, of... And, uh, no, don't remind me of myself, but... <laughs> that was a good match, man. To me, to whoop that ass, you know. AJ slipped one over with the most devastating finisher of all time. Schoolboy. Now, is it called a schoolgirl when girls yeah, do it? Okay. Yeah, whatever. Call it a thin mint because it's a Girl Scout. It's kind of something that yeah. anybody can get beat with and not lose any steam. So ridiculous that you hold somebody. I've, I've actually worked with big guys and they didn't want to take a finish like the Shining Wizard, which is a not anybody can get knocked out. There ain't a motherfucker on this planet that can't get knocked out by, by a full in speed team. kick to the yeah. right to the cranium. But some bigger guys didn't want to take the Wizard, but they want I you to hold them down with one hand when they're not even hurt. Hold them down with one hand. And sometimes I would actually kind of pose a little bit with the other arm just to let him know. You should have just kind of... I was just like, all right. Hey. <laughs> but no, I thought that was really good. Uh, what was the uh, Cena and uh, Sheamus against Ziggler and Big Show? That finished real good. That was a good finish to that match. The tag match of the champs against the PTP. PTPs are growing on me, man. Yeah, I like them. Week by week. I especially like the Shining there, but the other guys are all right. Shining. too. That other guy just looks way too much like John Cena. I he think does. that might be John Cena. They might just be dressing him up they, in they, some kind of costume and sending him as out. As much as they pay that motherfucker to show He ought to. Yeah. Um, Chuck Coates would go out there for George South for tw 20 bucks and work six times. Man, that was a, so that was good. You had the Divas. You had the other tag match. And I remember I said, damn, man, this has been a really good... I tweeted this. I said, I hope I don't jinx it. And then we um, went to that Santino Sandow segment, which, which wasn't bad, but it was a little long. I kind of like, eh. Mm. And I mean, you just know they're going to get, Sandow's going to get the win, so that was kind of anti What was he trying to do? Hit him in the head with the microphone? I guess. Did he swing it, or did he just kind of hold it up there? I don't fucking know what the hell he did. What did he say? He said something like, this is a conch shell for you or something, he did like that, and tried to conch. hit him in the head, and he said, Psh. You ever had some cock? Yeah. Um, I don't fucking know. That, um, then the next match, Alberto Del Rio against, um, Gimmick Mask. That was probably Gimmick Mask's best uh, match in the WWE. I'll tell you what, that was a good matchup because Alberto Del Rio pulled a Ric Flair in that match and sold like crazy for that dude. Yeah, it was good. But Did, he still like, knew who was going to win. That's yeah, the only thing. I like that damn. Did you see that spot where he was hanging on the ropes and he kicked him right in the damn face? That, as great as that looked, and he might not have known how great that was going to turn out, that was like one of those deals of, man, he, that was finish worthy. Damn, he, I think just, he just kicked him right in the face. Yeah, it could be. But I didn't see him bleeding like damn Ryback. Hey, if that motherfucker could take a kick from Krokop, and I ain't going to necessarily say he took it, he did receive it. But obviously, he, he's... What he's, happened he's after the kick? Fucking drop. <laughs> so that goes back to your earlier point. A kick to the head 
will knock a motherfucker out. Yeah, but there's a big difference between a kick from my ass and a crook out. I will concede the power. But, um... No, that was a good match. I like that. I, I'm a big fan of Alberto Del Rio's anyway. Huge, you're, you're huge. a big, you're a, a huge, you're a big fan of anything fan. you're a fan of. Um, that was good. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan too. But like, the, the only thing is, just I knew Alberta was going to win, and that Sandow, I knew was going to win. So those two segments were kind of predictable, predictable, and that takes uh, a bit of the excitement out of it for me. But still, uh, both good matches. Um, what do you think about Brad Maddox? Good delivery, good delivery on what he's doing. Okay, are they trying to? push him or is he going to be not seen after another couple of Raws? Uh, I don't know. It might be one of those guys, man. It might just be a slow build. Real slow. Might be real slow. Keep, but keep in mind, back in the day when we were coming up, if somebody was new... Yeah, if they did that to you, you you're a jobber for yeah, life. Yeah, you'd be done with that, no doubt. But actually, uh, he didn't actually get pinned last night, did he? Did he get pinned or did oh, he yeah. win by count? Right. I mean, or did he fucking get yanked out? Thought Randy just beat Randy fucking Randy beat the shit out of him. Okay, and and the, the Randy in that match was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That fucking DDT with the feet on the ropes is tremendous. It was funny the way he did it because normally he like works his way into it. He just grabbed him by the damn trunks and stuck his feet out there and said, Shh. and he had that look on his face like, motherfucker, hate him, motherfucker here, come here. Um, yeah, that was good. Now then, look, does, and then the involvement of. The Shield. We didn't have no other names left, so we call ourselves The Shield. When you need injustice, when injustice is being served, who do you call? I think they're you stepping on your shield. gimmick a little bit. What, what gimmick? Shit, they can add my gimmick. <laughs> I ain't there no more. Yeah. Um, what do you think about them three guys? It kind of surprises me that you didn't know that one dude was Rosie's brother. I, I said he looked just like the motherfucker. I, I would think you would know. how many people are in that family? Yeah, there's a lot. But... Brother. And a lot of them look so like... So when you were working with him, you didn't go to his house for dinner or anything no. like that? Bro, you don't yeah. go to a Samoan's house <laughs> to say, get food? <laughs> How would that work out? I will text Rikishi right now. Yeah. Um, actually, uh... He's in that family, too, ain't Today he? is actually the anniversary of Eki's passing, as a matter of fact. I just thought I'd get somber. I don't know. Yeah. You just bring Roman is Rosie's brother. I, yeah. I told you he looked like him. Bring the whole house down. I there, probably I probably did know that. Probably, probably. The Roman name, I just don't. I like the name. All right, that, that, don't associate that brings me to my next question. Who makes up these fucking names? What was your first question? Uh, I don't know, but we answered it already. Oh. Who makes up these fucking names? Dude, I don't know if those guys uh, get them themselves or... What, what I mean, their names, like... What does that mean? Roman? That motherfucker's from Rome. No, he's not. Maybe he's just wandering around. I mean, when your name is <laughs> Wyndham Rotunda... What if they show the little... What if they just show the skits of him in the back and he's just walking, walking around in the, in the rain? <laughs> Well, I mean, when your name—what like are you doing, Roman? In the rain. <laughs> what I mean, if your name is Wyndham Rotundo, why do they call you Husky Harris? That sounds like it's like some fat boy underwear at why Walmart is your name or something. Michael McGillicuddy. Yeah, and who who is he? Was uh, Kurt Henningson. Kurt Henning's son. I don't know why they do that. But where do they get Michael McGillicuddy from? I think somebody in his family is McGillicuddy or some shit. Who Stilts McGillicuddy? Gula? I don't know. But, I don't know. I mean, I just hear these names, and I'm like, what does that mean? They'd be like them going, your name's Shane Helms. I didn't, I quit asking because somebody had a real silly name one time, and I busted on them on it. It was their real name? No, it was some, like, their grandfather was named that or some shit, and I go, ooh. Okay, fuck it. Right, so, what, what so I decided not to do it. So they're not going to let anybody use their real name because they don't want them to take it with them when they leave. Yeah, which is so fucking silly. Like, if you got a cool name, I guess. Like, I like Tyler Black a lot better than I like Seth Rollins. And I don't know if Tyler Black's even his real fucking name. I'm going to assume it's not. Nobody's born with a name like that. No, but I mean... What I'm, about Rick Steamboat? His real name is Rick, Rick Blood. Blood. Last name is Rick Blood. Blood. Black Blood. Now, where do you get... He's trying to, like, play off Sam Steamboat's gimmick or something? Sam Steamboat, be a dreamboat, some shit like that. I wonder if back then... You know how courtesy works in this business this day. I wonder if back then, Ricky Steamboat called Sam Steamboat up and said, Can I use your name? I don't think I don't think he even knew, did he? I thought the story was that somebody came in and said, "Here's your name." He goes, "All right." It could, I don't know. I never knew that. Uh, I always thought Ric Flair came up with you know using Buddy Rogers' gimmick on his own. Mm -hmm. And if you read in his book, he says um, George Scott gave it to him when he came into Mid Atlantic. George Scott said, "You're gonna do Buddy Rogers' gimmick, be the Nature Boy." They said, "Fuck." Okay, whatever. And same thing with Buddy Landell. That was Dusty's idea. 
That was a horrible idea mm. for uh, on Buddy Landell's part. To do it? Yeah. You didn't like that? Uh, I think it was just limiting. I mean, you look at the fake Undertaker, the Underfaker. It's pretty much yeah. when that run with Flair's over, you're out, ain't you? Yeah, once the thing with Flair is done, then what, you still going to continue to be the second best nature boy or uh, actually third best actually wouldn't that mean that flair ain't done whipping your ass because you're still using his name yeah it's just I, I mean once once the flair landale match happened and flair won like it seemed like that would be it you go on you'd be that was the out. first wrestling match i went to buddy landale against rick flair what year was that 86 oh right you went out no 84 i was in the 11th grade no it was 85 november of 85 what was my first match i told you this before Let's dig into your trivia. See how much you pay attention to your friend. Don Cronodal and somebody. No. Now, that's the first actual match I went to. That's no, my that's first right. autograph was Don Cronodal and Lasertron. The first match I ever went to. I don't know. I forgot. Charlotte Cossie. The American Dream. Against a superstar, Billy Graham. Oh, you got to see that? Yeah. That was a bull rope match? Bob the Wire. Even worse. Or Bob the Wire. Outstanding. You know what I'm trying to sound like that? That guy that does the voiceover for the barbed wire cartoon? No, you ever seen Pet Cemetery? When Herman Munster. Oh, Herman Munster. How'd that Achilles tendon work out? I hated that fucking scene with a passion. That was one of them scenes where I'm in the movie theater and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that scene, that scene from Misery when that, when she broke that motherfucker's foot off. They God, showed the foot damn. go. I just hurt my foot, like, thinking about it. That my damn Achilles tendon's hurting right now. If you haven't seen Pet Cemetery, go watch that shit. Little gauge. gauge. Remember, Gage played a part in my career later on. I'll never forget that promo Grog cut on you that night at the Berkeley. What did he say? You tried to shoot on him first and said something about him being a vampire and he ought to be because he sucks. He said, "Well, I'm shooting him, cutting a promo on his character." Yeah, and then he came out there and said, uh, "Yeah, but he, yeah." But then he comes up there and said, "Well, you don't even know who you are. You're Kid Vicious. You're the show. You're the uh, you're Gage." And you went. Okay, got me there. Hell of a problem. Hell of a problem. Now, the best was in, uh, why was I going to be gay? Oh, go kid, I couldn't get away from Kid Vicious. I was trying to get away from Kid Vicious, but pro promoters kept wanting it. And, uh, I like that name. What? I, don't, I don't know. I, I thought it was funny, but. You want to be taken so, more seriously? So, so, you know, so. And then one of these days you're going to run into Sid and he's going to go. No, I mean, it was never fucking a play on Sid. Obviously, I was a damn 160 pounds half that time. Um, but, and, I don't know. Now, I was going to be Gage, G-A-U-G-E. And anyway, we go to Nashville, Music City Wrestling. And I'm in the ring, and that fucking promote guy goes, Tommy Gage! And I'm looking around going, is that me? What the fuck's going on? Where does Tommy shit come from? Where does Tommy shit come from? Well, did you have a kind of a suspicion that if you threw your hands up, you'd look across the ring, and the other guy would be doing it too, and go... I wasn't very sure what the hell was going on. Like, so the guy named Tommy Gage, because I didn't even know who my fucking opponent was. Who was it? Reno, Riggins, and uh, Steve Dahl? I don't know. Was it that match? I think so. Who that team with? How do you remember this shit? Um, Style and Shane Eden. I teamed with him? I don't remember that part. I don't fucking know. Those Music City days were fun. Hell, except for that drive. Whew, that shit hurt. That shit still hurts. Um, what are we talking about? We were talking about Raw. Yeah, well, 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 yeah. Let's not let's not get sidetracked. We've been um, known to do that in the past. We have been known to do that in the past. Uh, that was good. The uh, Fatal Four Way, although no one ever dies in a Fatal Four Way. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Uh, that was really good. I thought all four guys looked good. I like that Cesaro guy. That motherfucker's bad, ain't he? What did he do to Kofi Kingston? Oh yeah, the damn uh, tight waist he put on him. Tight waist goes back. Face plant. I love that damn uh, Karelian lift when he just yanks on the fuck what, up. down between the legs and up? No, 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 just like uh, the gut wrench. But he just yanks him up from a dead weight position. Like when you're, gut like in a Greco-Roman match when you're down there trying to stall? Yeah, remember, it's called a Karelian lift. Remember Alexander Karelian? Alexander Karelian. Is it Karelian or Karelian? I thought it was Karelian. Karelian? I don't know. I could be wrong. I know that motherfucker was bad. That's all I know. If you're trying to pull, that, that, shit. If you're trying to pull that shit on him, he'll just reach down there and snatch your ass up. Fuck you. Get on your back. That's what he do, because he would damn, you couldn't grab the guy's legs, so he would damn just yank him up by the waist, and he was so damn strong, he'd just lift him up. There you go. There you go. And there you fucking be. Five point throw. Five. Five. I was in a damn, uh, 
amateur match the other night. Bobby Lashley was watching that amateur match or pro match. But I fireman carried the guy and I put his hips up high, you know, so I got that. And I stood up and said, Five! Like Bundy. Somebody needs to start doing that gimmick again. Five counts. Nobody so wants to you. make Bundy come back to kill us all. Yeah, I'm kill us all. I ain't seen him on Twitter lately. He's like, generally really funny. Yeah. I like to kill myself and they're on your damn back machine a minute ago. Yeah, don't do that. My inverted machine? I don't think it can support you, man. That shit's custom. Barely. Did you I, hang upside down on it? Yeah, and all the blood rushed to my head and blew my mind. And I was down there trying to get up because I didn't... Wait, you just ate, you ate too soon. You can't, can't, can't do that right after you. Why? Uh, something about the food and makes the blood rush to your head. Like, you hang upside down too soon after you eat. That's why vampires can't do it. I don't, I don't fucking know. I was just told I might have had that confused with swimming. There's a possibility. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Now, we're just, now you're just rambling. A possibility. But TNA was really good last week. I did like TNA. Christian York looking good. Continuing his run. I like the uh, RVD, Austin Aries main event. That was I, good. I would like I would like the, uh, I don't know, I don't know. So you Blood were... Triangle. That is actually a better way to do it. Not as bad. Uh, I will say, we talked about this on the episode that didn't make it. It's very str- I, I would want to know the thought process about how Bully Ray, and I'll explain this when, when we come back. We actually got to go to a, uh, to a sponsor break right now. But, but remind me when we come back about the Bully Ray scenario. In this business, he's a, he's a smart, calculating man, and he, he's, he's a master of, of creating things, a very creative man. He put that gimmick on me, Harley Davidson. And same thing with Lawler. You know, Jerry Lawler has never, he's drove by millions of gyms, but I don't think Jerry's ever actually been in a gym. But you know what? To his credit, he always kept himself looking good in the ring. And his presence in the ring was was so dominating in the way he knew exactly when, where, and how to do what he did. He knew how to throw the punch. He knew how to work the crowd. He was a magnificent showman. Uh, but but and then and to, to Jerry's credit, he never did drink and uh, and do any kind of uh, side substances. He was pretty much focused on that. There was a but, while there when I had a little a little little problem with John Studd. Me and John and I love John now. And, this and is in New York. Yeah, yeah, in okay. New York. Uh, John would try to take advantage of you a little, a little in the ring. You know, he would because first, if 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 I was if Andre and I were wrestling him and Bundy, he wasn't gonna get anything off Andre. He had to take it on me, because hmm. you know that when you give it to Andre the tag, it's gonna be the Andre thing because right. Andre would do the Bundy and Stud thing. You know, blah blah blah. Right. Then then we started shooting those vignettes of of Hogan training me. Yeah. <laughs> And so that's where my career was born. And the first, I, the first official WWF match I had was in uh, Poughkeepsie with. Uh, back you, in our day, it was people. Guys were cracking left and right. I've won. I've cracked before, and just run off and run home because you just lose it. You know, a lot of guys I believe in in their days, kind of subliminally or subconsciously, were begging for an injury so they could just go home. Right. As long as it wasn't a horrible injury, you know. Ray Hernandez, Hercules Hernandez. God bless his soul too. He went ninety some days in a row without missing the. I mean, without missing a, a match. He worked crazy. every night ninety some days. If you're That's... babyface, heel, good or bad. If you go that bar long enough, you're gonna have problems. Hercules Hernandez, who we just mentioned, he lost a lawsuit somewhere in the middle of the country, some little in some little, little town, because he was in the bar and he got in an argument with some dude. I, mean, well, I was one of the first guys that got the shot that came from the Memphis territory. To the WWF, right? Right. And the Hillbilly Jim thing got over, you know. Vince McMahon calls Jimmy Hart. Jimmy thinks it's surreal. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, you're. And it's really Vince. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, I get the phone call. <laughs> Hold on, what's going on, Jimmy? What happened? Oh, baby, Vince McMahon. I said, oh, settle down. And he explained it to it's me. The best. He explained it to me. <laughs> oh, baby, I tell you right now, I love you, brother. I love you, my brother. I do this. I'll do this. I'll do Oh, my God, I love you forever. Oh, my God, I can't wait. And he's I'm, got a match against King Kong Bundy. He ain't going. It's already advertised. Vince is livid. Electric. You got to go. Me got to go. You got to go. How am I going to get there? Commercially, they hired a Learjet. So I'm flying along and one, one, one of the captains says, Hey, you must be a pretty important guy. And I'm sitting back there going, Me? He said, Yeah. He said, You must be a pretty important guy. I says, Why do you say? He says, Wow. He says, I'm just flying you over by yourself. I said, 
how much does it cost to fly me? He says, $27,000. Now, remember, this is in the 80s, yeah. brother. This is in the 80s. If we take me to the arena. He said, I'll just take your time. He said, don't worry about it. I said, no, I need to get to it. He says, don't worry about it. He said, I'm to take you to the hotel. I said, brother, I got to be at the Providence Civic Civic Center. The dude looked around over the corner. He says, Uncle Elmer showed up. Wow. That's heat. He cost him 27 grand for me. Let me what? say about Andre. I miss him very much. He he left us too soon, and he was always wonderful to me. We had some good laughs together. However, I must tell you, if he liked you, he liked you. If he didn't like you, he wouldn't give you time of day. I didn't care if you were a socialite, a dignitary, a movie star. It didn't matter who. He didn't care. Hey, everybody knows the story about Don McKid, a vicious ribber. Everybody knows he likes to rib and. And he'd like to do all these kinds of things, and and uh, you know, and he's shit disturber, so to speak. And 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 then he'd be a little bit salty, and he was rude. It ain't my fault. Nobody told him to go out there and abuse his body, take all those bumps, jump off the top of the ceiling into a teacup because it's cool. Oh, it's cool now. But when you get to be older and you're in a wheelchair and you got a million pains, now who's cool? Now who feels good? See, that's what I'm trying to say. But, but, and nobody, all the times that I've seen him, you're drinking some water. I've never seen him drink a glass of water in my life. He was either coffee or beer. He right. never had, and a cigarette continually in his mouth. So, you know, he was burning, and then, and then, like I say, he was, he was, he was mean to his family. Got thrown away. Nobody cares about him. I didn't see it happen. He showed up in about a half hour after it happened and was smiling like this with his teeth missing. Would you? His teeth were gone. You take drugs, you drink on top of them, you might not wake up. Right. I got 50 guys I could start naming names off here. That's all happened to them. And that's what I say. I want to go back and say about this, about these guys in this business. All these guys running around here talking about how cool he's doing all these crazy, amazing bumps. It's supposed to be entertainment. If you can't figure out how to entertain yourself, the, the people without killing yourself, then maybe you need to get in another business. That's just my way. Well, that's why they're all running around here with hips and, and all weird looking and stuff like that. And I ain't got none of that. Everybody asked me what happened to Chris Benoit. It wasn't steroids. If it was steroids, every bodybuilder and powerlifter and shot putter in the world would be killing people. They take a lot more than he took. It was, it's not steroids, concussions. I know for a fact he was knocked out every weekend for years up there in Calgary when he was coming down from Edmonton, where he was from, down to Calgary to try to learn how to wrestle because Bruce Hart told me he just wanted to be like dynamite kids so bad and do that head thing. He would get up in the, in the, in the corner on the turnbooks and come off there and he said knock himself out every time. We're in the, we're in the Joe Lewis Arena. I'm wrestling Ro Rowdy Roddy Piper in Detroit, Michigan. He'll Billy Jim, babyface. I go out there, what the hell is this? They're booing me and cheering him. That's when I knew the business had done gone crazy. I said, boo. And we're back and that was the Hillbilly Gym shoot interview commercial sponsored by RF Video, who so, also produced the Shane Helm shoot. So Shane, tell us, what are your thoughts on the Bully Ray love? Oh, yeah. The um, Bully Ray, I, want, I would like to know the uh, the thought process, how it evolved. Because you got Bully Ray doing some of the best work of his career. Definitely some of the best heel work of his career. One of the best heels in the business. Well, they kind of turned him babyface with that aces and eights angle. And yeah, yeah, yeah definitely making, but you know, I'm talking about what 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 got him to that top position was that heel work. Being a in tough a, guy. In a best physical condition. Being a tough guy, badass, a bully. He's a bully. A bully, if you will. Now, how do we go to, I want to I wanna do a love story with him. Do you think it has anything to do with LL Cool J? I don't fucking know. My fucking needs love. Do you think he ever sits alone in his room staring at walls? Possibly. And at times his conscience may call. <laughs> I thought it was fun. That shit caught me off guard when uh, Tara and that other... What's that fucking guy she's got with her? Oh, Jesse. Jesse. Pex or whatever the fuck his name is. When her and Jesse walked into to Brooke Hogan's office and Bubba was in there rubbing her damn feet or whatever. That motherfucker jumped up and said... See a foot massage. You can't compare that. Would you give a man a foot massage? No, but you can't compare that to going into the holy of all holies. Uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, Austin Aries funny too, man. When he was down doing that interview, standing on that desk and he laid down, uh, I was like, man, how do you? 
but how you do it? <laughs> that was funny. Hope got all hot about it. Their backstage stuff just seems so much more legit and not spot and you know spontaneous. A lot more relaxed. Yeah, because Hulk just walked in there and said, "Oh, you going look, He was talking to that black dude, Kenny Kane. He said, "Yeah, well, you gonna stand here and laugh it up, and you want me to do something for you?" And that guy's like, "Oh, wait, wait a minute, it was a funny joke." <laughs> I mean, this stuff just doesn't look scripted. It looks like they're they're rolling with something. Yeah, I think it give those guys a lot of leeway, and I think that's, that's good. A, that's it shows. Good, yeah, it's a good thing to do to let the person who's created their character uh, explore their character. Yeah, see what that see what comes out of them. Strangely enough. Yeah. I think it's great. But, I mean, if you're pre-taping all that shit, what difference does it make? If you don't like it, do it again. Kind of like the show. You don't, yeah, well, that's your last week. <laughs> we didn't like it. She hit the trash. Actually, here's one of the reasons we didn't like it. We had Christian York on, oh. who uh, apparently, I, I got a, a plea I need to make to TNA Dixie, at TNA Dixie on Twitter. I ain't saying you got to pay the guy a lot of money. He's not used to getting paid. I ain't even saying you got to give the guy a lot of TV time. He's used to not be on TV. But can you give the motherfucker a phone? Just, can you give him Even a phone? Even if it belongs minutes? to the company. Now, nah, Christian, you know we love you, boy. We'll have him back on when he's got a better uh, Wi Fi signal. Yeah, he, he had a bad feed. It would have been kind of like interviewing R2D2. Yeah, that shit was breaking up bad. We just said, fuck it. And then, <laughs> we lost the connection one time. I ain't even trying to get back. He said, fuck it. And then after we screwed around with it for three or four days, all our material was outdated, so we said, fuck it. Yeah, so I said, fuck it. So that's why we got Dr. Tom Pritchard coming. And when Christian York, when he gets a good internet feed and when he gets rid of that prepaid Nextel flip phone. We're going to get his ass to go to a Starbucks or something. You know what? We What I might do is a chin like for Chuck. He'll be in town, so maybe we'll just bring him yeah, live that's a in good the studio. Idea. That's one way to keep it from getting fucked up. I like to lie. I got to get some more live in the studios, man. That shit, that's, a, that's a lot better. A lot easier on my ass anyway. Let's get another camera. And then I can sit on the couch. Really? Right you mean like when I text you and say, hey, you want to stop and grab that camera for me? And you go, nope. That's been three weeks in a row now. Pretty much. Yeah, I already passed it. <sighs> anyway, but it is what it is. Chin Lock for Chuck, January 15th, 2013. And I just saw it come across my phone on my email. Which is not a prepaid next to Three more ringside tickets just sold in the last few minutes. You like, you keep, keep up with this shit, don't you? I'm right. I See, I get excited when I look, and it's not I my gotta, personal uh, email. It's the one for Chinlock for Chuck, because I know that's damn. I got something since uh, some some money put in my uh, fucking whatever that thing is. What's the uh, PayPal? Yeah, PayPal. My PayPal. And I thought it was for you guys, so I was gonna send it over. Send it over. No, it was for me. Uh, it doesn't matter. Send it over anyway. <laughs> I was gonna, I was like, oh, this must be for Chuck, because I was like, I ain't done nothing. I was like, I didn't know what the fuck it was for. But that shit was for me. Man, don't be. Also, uh, we got a uh, real quick. Let me throw this up. Rest in peace to the free bird, Buddy Roberts. Really hated to hear of his passing. Uh, we talked about him on the show today. Oh, yeah, but, that's right. But uh, Oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Talk about him passing? Yeah, he passed. He did pass. That sucked, man. That was really bad. I did you hear what happened to him? Mm -mm. I mean, did you ever hear what happened to uh, Brad Armstrong? I thought Brad Armstrong had a heart attack. Or I, I, mean, I don't know, man. Everything's a heart attack. I don't know if that's just what people say when they don't know. I don't know. Uh, they said Brad was sick or had gone to the doctor, had yeah, some kind of like problem. He was sick before. I mean, and Buddy's had health problems for a while. Well, all I know about Buddy was on, I saw him back you know, 10, 12 years ago, and he had one of those Gimmicks. things where he had, had had his throat operated on. So I don't know if it was you know, from that or whatever. But, man, that motherfucker was great. He And it, it was cool meeting him. Um, I, I, I don't know where he lived. I want to say it was in Chicago. Because uh, cause we were, uh, whatever it was, it was after a WWE show, and um, that was back when Michael Hayes was working with Matt and Jeff, and we all kind of traveled together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Buddy Jack was in, you know, he lived around there or something, and he came to see Michael, and he hung out with us in the bar. And that, was, that shit was cool, because I got to talk to him. I gave him a little free bird. Did he give you a drink? Oh, yeah. A drink as well. Here's, here's my buddy story. You know, uh, I did a uh, NWA convention. Uh, Greg Price does a convention in Charlotte every year. Didn't happen this year for some reason, but I think it'll be back next year. Um, and Buddy was there, you know, doing a legend thing or whatever. And I was a big fan of Buddy Roberts uh, because he was a legit heel, like, especially in, in the modern day era of wrestling, especially on the indie scene. Most heels out there trying to get cheers, they're trying to get pops, and they think that makes them over when it really they're just You're not, not doing your job, right? They're just not being a heel. They, you know, and, and it's harder too, you know, because uh, some fans are smart about things, and when they see cool heel shit. 
They like yeah. it. You know, same reason we like Sons of Anarchy, they're the heel. Same reason we like Dexter, he's the heel. Everybody just loves the fucking heels. That's just, you know, so it's a lot harder now than it was. But Buddy was just that legit. So when I stopped being the Hurricane and became Gregory Helms, Buddy was one of the guys I, I, I would go back and look. Because you know, I wanted people to really hate me and not be Hurricane anymore and to forget about that shit. So anyway, I was telling him that stuff, you know, I just really went up to him and I put him over. And, and a lot of people that know me never seen me really just blatantly put somebody over like that. Like, man, I just, just and I, uh, they were really surprised by it. And I, was, and I was like, no, you don't understand. Like, I really did. This is one of the guys I was watching. And so anyway, you know, we started having a couple of drinks, whatever. I don't think nothing about it. I get a call the next day from Michael Hayes. What do you say? He ain't supposed to drink. He's like, <laughs> he's like, Shane, like, yeah, he goes, Hayes, what's going on, buddy? He goes, What'd you do to Buddy? I ain't do shit to him. <laughs> I heard you guys were tossing him back at the bar last night. I said, uh, yeah, I guess so. He goes, he's not supposed to be drinking. He didn't mention that to you, did he? I said, uh, does he know that? <laughs> well, that night, I don't remember if he was drinking or not, but... Uh, I don't really remember getting like crazy out of hand. We just we just had a really good time. and. Um, well, that night I met him, you know, as soon as I got you know, comfortable talking to him, I said, man, I said, that shit you did with the Freebird hair cream back in world class, that shit was classic. That motherfucker, remember when he, I don't exactly remember how they did it, but he put it on Iceman Parsons and he lost his hair and then they put it on Buddy Jack. And I guess the gimmick was the cream makes your hair fall out or unless you throw it in your eyes like you're uh, Chris Adams and you go blind. Right. But uh, Buddy Jack <laughs> had that bald head and he'd wear that Harpo Marks wig out there with the wrestling headgear trying to hold it on and that shit would get all crooked and he'd, he'd, somebody would pull it off. He'd be running back to the dressing room doing the gimmick. That shit was great. Part of the original Hollywood Blondes as well. Yeah, did you ever see him back in his real early days? He was like a bodybuilder. He was in shape. Yeah, he, he I mean, you see a lot of guys that, I'll tell you who blew my fucking mind was Pre, uh, Precious Paul. Damn, have you seen any old pictures of him before oh. he got hurt? God, I know that motherfucker. It was Diesel one. Cock Diesel. He was cocking balls, Diesel. I love the damn Freebirds, man. That's the end of it. Every time, man, they were, anytime a new game comes out, like like say the Shield, everybody compares them to the NWO. Everybody compares everything to the NWO. Meany was talking about this yesterday, but the original game before the Horsemen, to me in my mind, was the Freebirds. That was the original game. Man, they were game the, mentality. They were the perfect six man, you know, three man group or whatever yeah. too, because they were they were all three different. Oh cool. yeah, way different. I mean, you had Michael Hayes, which was the the flamboyant, the charismatic one. You had He's the uh, mouthpiece. Yeah, Gordy was the big heavy hitter, the big workhorse, and then you, the muscle. And it's strange that the big man was the worker. Yeah, because normally that is not the fucking case. Anytime there's a big man, little man combo or combination. Yeah, I mean that rarely happens. Never I mean, is the, the free big birds, man, the fucking workhorse. The free birds, the serial thrillers. I mean that <laughs> rarely happens, but uh. <laughs> No, but then you, the only two times. The but you had Buddy Jack, who was the, just the heater, the heel, and he was awesome. And he plus he could do the comedy when he had to. Yeah. But man, that, that shit was awesome. I used to love the Freebirds too. Michael Hayes out there. Buddy. See, people like Gordy because of his work. People like Hayes because he was the charismatic one. But everybody just unanimously hated Buddy. What the was a heel? I was always a heel fan, and I think it alludes back. You know, when you think because you're because you're a heel in life. Because I'm a heel, and I like other no. Because I'm an I'm an asshole magnet. But no, you like, I think part of that comes with trying to be smart to the business when you're really not, and you think, oh, wait a minute, I know what they're trying to get me to do. Yeah, so I'm going to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was like certain heels that I just, normally I liked all the heels. And there were certain ones that I just couldn't stand. Who's the first cool heel for you? Oh, fucking Nikita. Mm, Nikita was one. I mean, Nikita, when I went, that, Nikita's the reason I wanted to start wrestling. Yeah? Uh, yeah, because I went in there that night, and I was like, damn, that motherfucker's awesome. Because Ric Flair was a baby face when I, when I went, because that was when he wrestled Buddy Landell. And I didn't really like him. And the guy that took me to the match was a big uh, Ric Flair fan. And I was like, fuck I think that. the first cool heel for me was Double A. Yeah. Because he would do a lot of baby face moves, that fucking spine buster. He would actually, you know, he would outsmart, which is very strange, but he would outsmart the uh, baby face a lot. There's a lot of things he did that I didn't uh, agree with as I got into business psychology wise. And, but, uh, man, he would. Hit that damn spine buster out of nowhere, and I would like see crowds going crazy. Which well, a lot of like a lot of heels back then, the, the way they would work was just to be a total straight up, one hundred percent chicken shit pussy. Yeah, and I came in, came yeah, in he, he'd kick ass. And he was creative too. Like I mean, did he invent the spine? As far as I know, he invented that fucking spine. Buster. The first one I remember seeing do it. I remember seeing the. Buster. Did anybody ever use the gourd butt? I was gonna. I don't know. That motherfucker creative. 
And that damn left-handed punch. I don't think he had a choice in that. Okay. He just a that bitch. But he, man, he was great. Yeah, he was the first cool heel to me. And now, I mean, Makita. And then the horsemen, like, when the horsemen, like, uh, when they really started rolling, boy, I was, that, that's, they just converted me. Because I was a big, dusty, rock and roll expert. I got pictures of me with them bandanas around my leg going to the door in the arena. Looking like a jackass. I was a big baby. Did you, did you see the ones of me with the bleach blonde hair? and? Woo, yeah, but you were still in the business. No. Motherfucker, you was in the business. No, no, the blonde hair was the before. As the nature boy, Mike Flair. Would you, why didn't you at least be Mick Flair? Oh, we, did, we were just... You don't want to go that far? No, but do you remember Jeff when he was ravishing Jeff Rudd? Was he ravishing? No. The day was hot stuff, too. Yeah, so he he's a double gimmick infringer. And Chuck was the stinger. Now, who was he trying to be? Sting. <laughs> now, the only one that actually <laughs> kept their gimmick all through their entire <laughs> career was David. And he was just David Taylor. Yeah, notorious David Taylor. And he had that damn robe just like Terry Taylor's. Looked exactly like some damn... I remember when he, he looked like the motherfucker. Yeah, he did. I remember. I, when, it I remember when we met, or I don't know if it was a. Like, yeah, I guess it was the first time he met Terry Taylor face to face. He's in the locker room in WCW, and Terry Taylor walks up, and you know they shook hands, and he said, "Hey, Terry Taylor," and David said, "David t- Coates." <laughs> you didn't say that. Yeah, me and Chuck were standing, and we both busted out laughing, and he went, "What are you, a smartass?" And he turned and walked away, and David was like, "Why are you doing it? Now you got him heat. Probably what stopped me from getting the job." What, 20 years ago? Yep. See? It's moments. It's moments like that. Moments in time. What the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. We're talking about TNA. TNA is a good show. TNA is a good, well produced wrestling show, if you ask me. And it ain't yeah. perfect, but it's. No, yes. I mean, especially. You nip, I don't care how good something is. Somebody told me it's a long time ago. No matter how good of a job somebody does, you can always nitpick it. There are cracks in the Great Wall of China. The motherfucker will fall down eventually. That's just how it. And then the Mongol horde will just come pouring in. I was talking about that one time I did an interview. I can't remember who, but I was talking about how uh, even the greatest movies out there have fuck-ups. And there are people who intentionally look for it. And there's actually a website called moviemistakes.com. And, and, but don't go to it. Because yeah, because then it'll, you'll be totally disillusioned every time you watch them. Because now when I watch Pulp Fiction, there's a couple things that happen. And now I know that they're there and it fucks me. And actually, sometimes I catch a lot of them. I actually, I catch a lot of mistakes in movies unintentionally, but just I'm observing. You mean like when they do one camera angle and I'm sitting here and this belt's right here, and then they go back and do another one two seconds later and it's over here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're wearing a blue shirt? Yeah. Have you seen that card trick that people do? Mm-mm. There's this card trick out there. I, I forgot what they call it, but it's like they're doing some cheesy card trick. It's like a guy and a girl sitting at the table and they're doing some cheesy trick where they switch the cards. But the camera, they're, they're like sitting in front of a backdrop. <laughs> And they'll show a close up of the camera and they'll cut back. And it like, the first time they do it, they'll take the black backdrop down and it'll be blue when you come back. And then they'll be wearing different shirts and all this shit. But everybody's like looking at the cards and they don't get any of it. Hmm. Crazy Why do you do psychology, it? how that works out. So what else happened on Impact? No, I can't remember. It doesn't stay fresh in your mind because it was from four days ago. Yeah, uh, Mickey James and Gail Kim had, had a good match. I would like Gail Kim to actually try to be a heel every now and then. I think that would be better for her. But I, I'm not a big fan of girl wrestling I may have said that in the past but Mickey James is pretty good Mickey's a great baby face too. yeah she's a she's a good I mean just so many of them don't really get it but she she like got and I like Gail's work but I just there's nothing like just went out there and kind of out wrestled Mickey and I was just like okay so she's gonna be doing the job yeah that's some what she people does. just don't but uh she's good uh, you know Molly Holly was good mm-hmm. you know people like that uh Peggy Lee Leather was good I'm taking it back now do you remember her yeah, I remember. She could work. You don't I, remember. I don't remember a match. Yeah, she was good. She was one of the ones that could actually get in there and go. She wasn't very, you know, she wasn't one of the more glamorous ones. Then they whooped that ass. But she, she could get in there and work. I can't remember. What about Daniels Kazarian? They had a good match with uh, AJ and Storm. And they did it Gunkum style. Those guys, you like them guys, don't you? I like them. I, I think they try to be too funny sometimes, but that might... You know, I mean, that's kind of nitpicking. That's kind of the thing, just being entertaining heels. So, uh, I think sometimes you need legit heels, and sometimes you can have, you can deal with. Inter- Everybody can't be the same. So, uh, I like the one in it. You know, you can't say anything about the in-ring stuff. There, that shit at some point. Yeah, they're good in the ring. I mean, maybe they could tone down the silliness just a little bit and add a little bit of more. Yeah, you know, but with the aces of eights out there trying to be mean ass heels the whole time, you can't have everybody. You know what I like about the aces and eights? Not sure. Well, I like a lot of things about them, but when the um, 
they come in. They don't come in the come down a the ramp. They got their own little side the door. They come in. That's, that's, that's the little things like that. Did the NWO do that? No, they came down a the ramp. They did it first when they were, you know, when it was just like Hall and Nash, and they were coming down the damn bleachers and shit like that. You know, speaking of what you were talking about earlier, those little continuity things in film. Uh-huh. Tell you what, I don't like about the Aces and Eights. What's that? You ever see the little the backstage that? stuff where they're sitting in their little uh, lair? Mm-hmm. You notice they're all sitting around drinking beers. Right. You notice they're all wearing masks that don't have mouth holes in them. How do how do they drink their beers? I don't know. Why well, they have nice little straws? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they had the fucking helmets with it now. Yeah, with that damn little thing. I'm waiting to see what I'm good. I got a little hot the, the other day. I had the damn mason jar though. Like you had to shine. They had that one. Apple brandy. Because that's very that's something that happens in a biker walk. Trust yeah, me. or around here. But did you remember that rant I had on Facebook the other day when I got hot about people stooging out the damn angles? I'm not going to stooge oh, them okay. out on here in case anybody's looking for a spoiler. You're not going to get one from me. Right. But. You know, I find out things from time to time. A man has been known to get things. And you've told me things, and you say, hey. hey I mean, I you don't really have to. People, they know people. You don't really have to tell me this, but, you know, if you want to cover your base just to make sure I'm not confused, but, you, you know, I know when to keep my mouth shut. And when I find out something that is a wrestling angle that hasn't taken place yet, why fucking go on the Internet and tell everybody about it? Isn't that like telling somebody the ending to a movie when they haven't seen it yet? That's, that's just kind of too, like, man, uh, like, you know, uh, Sunday night, you had a big Sunday night of TV on. You had Homeland, you know, Walking Dead, all, all those shows, all those hot shows going on. If something happens and you're not home and, and you're missing it, you better just stay the fuck off social media. You think? Because people, I mean, but then again, but that's a little different because I think once it happens. Yeah, if it had already been game. on the air, then it's, it's free game to talk about it. When it hadn't happened yet and you find some stooge yeah, yeah, around his mouth, that. that's fucked up. I mean, people should know better. Yeah, even though, like, uh, like I, I hate the SmackDown spoilers. That, that's a big thing every week to tell everybody what happened on SmackDown. Like, well, you know, just watch the shit and fucking shut up. Or if you go watch it live, be considerate of the people that are going to see it on TV. And don't fucking tell them what happened. They'll find out on Friday. Would it not? But, man, you can't... Uh... See, that would be like... When the Titanic movie came out, if you went and saw it, and I hadn't seen it yet, and you said, Mike, the boat's going to sink at the end. <laughs> I'm not sure that would be the same. I wouldn't have even gone to see it, though. I'm not sure that would be the same. I was like, damn. You mean they didn't fucking make it? They didn't make it. Damn. Did the band really play all the way to the end? Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Did you see Steve Harvey saying, <laughs> he was talking about this, <laughs> if it would uh, something about it, there would have been black people in that movie, it wouldn't even have been no movie. <laughs> Letting the band play to the end? Shit. That was good, though, man. I like that movie. That's like Richard Pryor said that if The Exorcist had been about a black family, it would have lasted two seconds. Yeah. He said, as soon as the devil spoke, hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> GTA. What's all that noise upstairs? with the girl crazy? Damn, girl. Wash your ass. The Waitress, that's their favorite movie, is the Titanic. I thought you were going to say The Exorcist. No. I'm surprised. It might be. I still hate that shit. Check out shanehomescom.tumblr.com. That's some good. You on my Tumblr? Yeah, I do go on your Tumblr. I put up some good scientific shit on there. Yes, you did. Very interesting. Very thought provoking. Then I'll throw up some booties on there. Of course, shanehelms.com. Not quite as thought provoking as, as say, Mark Briscoe. Speaking of which, there's something I got you people want to see. Show it to Mike. Watch and enjoy. Good afternoon, folks. Should I say good evening? I know what you're thinking. That young gentleman looks like a white Bill Cosby. Bearded, of course. And if you were to say that, you would be absolutely correct. But we're not here today to talk about Bill Cosby, unfortunately. It's about that time of year again, ain't it? You hear them jingle bells? I do anyway. It's Christmas time. And what you gonna get your beloved family and friends? What you gonna get your loved Iron? Machete?
both great choices. But let me suggest to you that you get your friends and your family, one of them anyway, a most unique, one of a kind gift that you're only going to find in this offer we got for you right here. This beautiful pair of teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, these can be yours on eBay. Starting bidding at $99 break today. Type in Mark Briscoe's Teeth. And they can be yours. They come with a candy bar of your choosing, king size of course, and a random order. Excuse me. Hello. Is that right? Is that right? Are you sure? You sure we can do that? Thank you. That's excellent. Yeah, bye bye. The starting bid, folks, has been dropped from $99 to $49.95. It's been cut in half. Get on eBay. Place your bid. You got five days. Count them five days. Mark Briscoe Teeth, go! Quit looking at me, go! What do you think about that shit? <laughs> We're not going to talk about Bill Cosby. Unfortunately. That shit is funny, man. I don't know if that's part of his character. I don't know. <laughs> I want to see more of that shit, though. Is that something that they produced, or is that something that I don't know. he just, I just did on his I own? I saw it on the... And I actually, it's on Ring of Honor's website, isn't it? Is it? I think that's... I don't know. When I looked it up, that's where I saw it. Oh, man. Did you? I hope just, they don't mind me showing it on the show. So. Uh, go to... What's the website? I don't know. Ring of Honor at ROH.com. Isn't it? Is it ROH.com or ROH? Wrestling? I can't remember. I googled Mark Briscoe's teeth. Anyway, go to the Ring of Honor website and watch it. It'll be on there too. So, yeah, that shit was fucking hilarious. What about any iron? Machete. Machete. Either one's a great choice. Equally good choice. That <laughs> fucking shit's that crazy. Shit, he reminds me of that one of those cats from Oh Brother, We're Off Thou. He reminds me of them two dudes that used to sit in the audience of the stands and watch the football games on the Water Boy. Uh, that has been a while. Which, for a while, for for your information, kind of inspired the, the Ducks. Ducks. Yeah. There you go. That's why I had that gimmick sideburns like that dude. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, hey, giddy up. Giddy up. But that shit was funny, boy. Did I ever tell you about uh, the Briscoes came to uh, WWE and they got in the ring and were working out? Yeah, and you said they liked to kill each other? Yeah, I wanted to get in there with it because I was like, man, I heard about them. What'd you do? They were talented. And I, so I was like, man, because I would do that, man. I would go in there and lock up with some of the local guys and just, you know, play around sometimes. And, uh, man, I went down there and they were beating the fuck out of each other. What'd you do? I said, okay. Y'all good luck. Good luck with all that. I said, they ain't getting fucking knocking the shit out of each other. I said, fuck it. They were trying to get that job. Get one of them contracts. That's probably not the best way to go about it. I, I don't know if that was it. I think, uh, I think they liked them. I remember hearing positive stuff about them, but um, they are different. They're entertaining. Yeah, man, that fucking promo is a damn hilarious man. It's a goddamn June bug. <laughs> they can get in the ring and do it too. Hell yeah. I know. I'd be in there with them motherfuckers like this. Don't hurt me. Like wrestling, sensitive. Like wrestling the Haas brothers. Yeah. Been in street fights that were easier than that. Man, when I had I had to get my shoulder lance. I don't. I didn't know if I told the people this, but I got bit by a spider recently. The radioactive one. I fucking wish. <laughs> anyway, put me out of the gym for a while. My shoulder was all swollen the fuck up, and I had to go get it lanced. And it hurt so fucking bad. It's sitting there like pushing on it, and all that nasty shit's coming what out. What was in there? Fucking death and decay. I got what? a big streak right here like, in my yeah, arm. Yeah, I, I saw it. That red streak? No, no, it's like, like an indention. Or oh, they, they damn dissolved your muscles and they sucked the shit out? Yeah, like from, from right here all the way to my damn shoulder. What did they say? What kind of spider it was? They don't know. I think it might have happened in London, so it might be a wolf spider. A wolf. A motherfucking wolf. Bit my ass. Three three little places I had a fucking little. What would he do? I don't know. Motherfucker got angry or something. I might have. He might have been in the bed and I rolled over on his ass. He's like, "Get off me." Get off, motherfucker. But uh. Oh yeah. So anyway, where I came to that was, they finally got it all done, and like that doctor was like, "Man, that's one of the worst hematomas I've ever seen in my damn life." I was like, yeah. He goes, I'm sorry. He goes, I'm really sorry. I know that hurt. And I go, I mean, I've been in fights that way easier. And he goes, hmm. Hmm. 
Mike, if you want, you can laugh at it. Or not. Ha <laughs> ha! I'll be over here. Yeah. Scratch that. But not that did happen, man. That motherfucker fucked me up. You know what that is? Thanos. Or Booker T. One Thanos. or the other. Name derived from a famous poem called Thanatopsis, a meditation on death. I'll have you know that. Is that what he's doing right there? Meditating on That's death? That's Infinity Gauntlet. He's got in his hand. You don't know about the Infinity Gauntlet? No, I missed his story. That doesn't look to you me like he's Avengers. holding anything. Did you watch the last Avengers movie? Yeah. That's the motherfucking heel at the end that turned around. Did you watch it after the credits? I guess not. He's the, he's the big boss. So like whenever oh, oh those guys that were, that were pumping Loki's team there? Yeah. I almost said Lodi. Yeah, Lodi's team? Yeah. What would you do if Loki came out there with a damn sign? Uh, what were we talking about last week? Did we get to talk about Russell Gate? I don't that, know. Was that on the show that didn't make it? That was on the show that didn't Yeah, because it was week before last. That was a good show. Winston State of North Carolina, I think they're going to do it every year. It's a jam-packed event. I team for the first time and hopefully last time ever with the Disco Inferno. We were victorious, so we're undefeated. One in a row. That's a streak. You uh, beat uh, Raven and uh, C.W. Anderson. No, Raven and Lodi. Yeah, that's what I said. And, and C.W. Anderson and, and Shane, Shane Douglas. Douglas. The franchise. The franchise Shane Douglas against Shane Hurricane Helms. There was Shane on Shane Crown. There you have it. Never see that in the WWE. Never see that. One of, one of you is going to change the one name. One of us had to change the name. We both actually, too, worked for uh, Crossfire in the National Crossfire. Got you boys caught in a little Crossfire. <laughs> we'll be returning there uh, soon, too. Let me that, throw this up, man. I got a uh, that January. Is that what you about? said Saturday, Sunday night? Saturday night? What's that? Let me throw this up. Let me throw this up. This Saturday. What the fuck am I doing here? This Saturday. Ging, ging, ging. This is in Clayton, North Carolina, December the 8th. 7 p.m. Headlock for autism. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. EWA, I'm not sure what that stands for. Championship match, George South versus Tommy Wildfire Rich. Former Tommy world Rich. heavyweight champion. Fire up, wildfire. Charlie Dreamer against Joey Sylvia. And in a special six-person tag match, and I don't know how in the fuck this, this happened. It originally, it's going to be a tag match. Yeah, it's going to be a tag match, myself and Ricky Morton. But now, and little Addie Miller is a zombie girl from Walking Dead. And you don't watch Walking Dead, so you might She's an actress? Yeah. So yeah. her brother, her brothers have autism. That's why she you know, is helping out with the show. But she's going to wrestle? Uh, I don't know what the fuck. She ain't going to get in the ring as long as I got anything to do with it. Okay. Thank you. Um, but I will be at that show. You will see me at the chin lock for Chuck table beneath the big Omega banner. So that that's the thing. So, uh, Matt Houston, Lewis Moore, and... C.W. Anderson against myself, Ricky Morton, and little Addie is going to be in the corner. I mean, there's no way we're going to let her get in the ring. We're going so it's a three-on-two handicap match. Basically, it's a three-on-two. That's basically what. Whip the shit out of all three of them. Them motherfuckers are going to beat my ass. Put the damn three in my own triple slap on. I still you know that. I do know that. I got hit by a fucking car in Cleveland. How'd you like it? Not too good. I was in fourth grade walking home from school, minding my own fucking bench. You know what that driver probably said right before he hit you? Fuck this motherfucker. Hey, watch this. Ran my ass. I happened right in front of school too. In Clayton, North Carolina, the middle school is right in the middle of town, and uh, there's no parking lot for the buses. The buses line up around the parking lot. And one of my close friends at the time named Alan Shallington. That's a good. Ran name. between two buses. That's and a like good a name. dumbass. I'm in pursuit. So I ain't looked. That motherfucker made it. So you I run out. I can make it too. You run out like this, and you gave it one of these. Oh, that motherfucking car busted my ass. It knocked me down, and I got back up, and I knew I was fucked up, but I was just out of breath. I wasn't, like, really too bad hurt. And I looked in the damn car, you know, and you're kind of just like, what the fuck happened, you know? And the, the driver's like this. You know, she's all shell-shocked. She thinks she didn't kill a little kid. You know? What kind of car was it? It's like, I don't know. If it was, like, a Mercedes or a Lexus or something, you probably should have. I don't know. I was just trying to get up out of the damn road. You anyway, thought you were going to get passenger trouble. got out of the car, and she ran and tried to get me to lay down. In the middle of the street? But just try to lay down because, you know, instead of getting up, walking around. And causing a hematoma. And so she came and fucking hit me. And that was ran worse. into me. That knocked me down and I hit my damn head on the pavement. And then it was, uh, I was fucking boogie woogie Jimmy Bain on the damn thing. And anyway, all the buses are still there. So all the kids are see me laying on the street fucked up. Did you find it embarrassing? I think I was uh, unconscious there for a second. But, uh, nah, then the ambulance came, they cut off, the ambulance, ambulance. The ambulance came and they cut all my fucking clothes off. And then you were embarrassed. No, nah, then I was happy. 
But my dad worked down the street. I remember that man. My dad came down there. I looked up, saw him. He's all, of course, he's all sad, you know, teary eyed. My brother's there. He's all disheveled. Like, Who, Violent J? Violent J? Yeah, so there's my Clayton story. Anyway, so I'll return to Clayton. Hopefully, I won't get hit by a car this Saturday. But hopefully, the show will be a success. Hopefully, we can do some good promotional work for Chen Lock for Chuck. Chen Lock for Chuck? Chen Lock for Chuck. The shirts are going to be cool, man. We, uh, right now, you can see it's a mask. Uh, Chuck used to wear the face paint. He was a big fan of the face paint. Somebody tried to talk him out of it one time. Uh, I don't know who that would be. Uh, I'm gonna try to, we we're going to try to put something on the back, too. You know, everybody's name, Jeff Hardy, Matt, uh, myself, uh, all the other guys are going to be on the show. Uh, and that shirt will be available on chinlockforchuck.com, so don't forget to get that. But cool, Daddy. I think I'm. I think I'm tired of fucking babbling. What about yourself? Babylon. Babylon. Babylon was Turkey, right? Mesopotamia. I believe so. I Mesopotamia was Iraq and Iran. It's Macedonia. Macedonia. What is that? I was reading, man. I, I, I was listening. Not reading, but listening to it. Damn, big documentary on Sumeria. That's some interesting shit. You gotta get into that. Really? And I got a damn. Uh, I listened to a documentary too, yet not a documentary, but a podcast yesterday with Graham Hancock, and I guess it was around the September, uh, October uh, point in time of this year. And it was just, somebody mentioned Rick, Mick Romney, and I'm a huge fan of Graham Hancock, but not a huge fan of Mitt Romney. Not at all. And when Graham Hancock goes, that guy's a fucking idiot, <laughs> and I think, what an idiot he is. I'm like, it popped me huge, man. I was in the gym too, man. I busted my ass off that treadmill. What an idiot he is. Like, he just said that shit with disdain. I don't think he had the F-bomb in there. I might have added that myself, but he did say, what an idiot he is. It would appear, too, that after this debacle of an election, the Republicans still don't get it. Just people don't get it, man. People are fucking retarded. And I don't mean that against anybody that's, you know, like, I know you're not supposed to use the R word anymore. but Okay, they're, they're just really dumber and shit. Dumb fucking people out there. Dumber and shit. That's C+. Plus that's Great that's that's average. way too high. That's that's fucking dumb. If you have that, that's that's yeah, not and good. even that's too high. Sure. Surrounded know. by it. Surrounded it's, it's everywhere. It's what like, percentage of the population do you think is intelligent? <sighs> you know what's hard? It's, I don't think there's a, a correct answer for that because I think education is a part of it. Uh, how, how they're taught, I think uh, how we teach people. Uh, it's very fucked up and just incorrect the way we, you know, we're worried more about testing than we are about actual learning. And I guess, you know, uh, Finland, is it Finland? Somebody just posted something about Finland does the exact opposite. They test less and teach more and people just end up being smarter because of it. So it's hard to say because there might be some really intelligent people out there that uh, they're just not being taught correctly or they don't have the opportunity to learn correctly. You know, maybe they're in like low income schooling and shit like that and they just don't have the opportunity, so I don't think there's no way to even answer that, but of the people I deal with, if you want to just talk about me personally, dealing in life, you know, just you go to a store and you just watch people and shit like that, man. What, and they're over there picking their nose? and Yeah, and just, I'd say 75%. See, I'll say this about I, know, I tested in school, I don't mean to interrupt you, I tested uh, two years in a row in the top 1% of kids my age in the nation, and I don't even think I'm that smart. Well, I was, uh, I was not into knowledge when I was in in school like I am now. You know, I just, you know, it was one of the things where your parents and your teachers make you do it. And it's right. like, you know, I could put a very minimal amount of effort into it and mm -hmm. get good grades. Right. You know, that's not quite the same when you get into college. You know, there you got to kind of step it up a little bit. But my point is, since I've been out of school, I like to learn things. Right. You know, I like to watch stuff on the History Channel that I don't know anything about. I like to look up things on the internet. Like, if somebody will come up and mention something to me about, like, you just said something about Samaria. I'll be at home tonight researching that shit. That shit is good. I mean, just because I want to know about it. You know, some people go, what? Samaria? Fuck Samaria. You know, and then, not me. I'm interested in things. You're interested in things. You know what I'm mainly interested in? Things that interest me. Food? I find that interesting. The that fucking doctor, man, with my spider bite, gave me a free, uh, didn't charge me because I was, I was listening to it. He goes, what are you listening to? I said, a documentary. He goes, on what? And I go, Sumer. And he goes, and didn't charge. I, I don't know that's why he didn't charge me. I might be pronouncing that Sumer. Might be how it's supposed to be. It's spelled with a Y, isn't it? S-U-M-E-R. I don't know. Ask me I don't know. I could be fucking saying that all wrong. 
I didn't memorize the motherfucker. I just listened to it. That's one of those ones I want to listen to again and again. Where'd you find it at? Oh, man. I, it's, uh, I, I found it off Tumblr, actually. Is it on your Tumblr? Com. No, I didn't, I, I didn't reblog it. If I did, I can't, I can't recall if I did. I have to search. I'll find it. But, um, it's, if you found it, I'll find it. It's out there somewhere. It's out there. Something leads to it. You can go, I mean, go to Tumblr, like a sign in to Tumblr or whatever, and do a search throughout the Tumblr engine uh, for Sumer and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool shit on there. Outstanding. See, that's the stuff I think we should teach in school. Like whether that's true or not, I think that shit is just a great possibility to be true. Well, you it's mentioned you, you mentioned testing. Uh, if, I don't know if anybody knows. I mean, I know you know, but I homeschool my daughter, mm -hmm. and the only things they test them on are reading, or reading comprehension, math, and language arts. But you know, that's kind of you know, like if I never taught her anything about science or social, stuff, you know, if I, if I never taught any of that stuff, nobody would ever know. Correct. And I kind of don't force that stuff on her. I try to teach her, like, you know, things about history and stuff that she needs to know. But I, I try kind of let her try to tell me what she wants to learn about. Mm -hmm. And she'll do it, and she'll put a lot more effort into it. I, I like that. I agree with that. I seem to be losing you here. No, this, uh, I was just thinking, because uh, I was in the thought process there of, uh, like, why I think one of the things at school is when they deter kids from reading, because I used to have a reading program uh, for WWE, and I would go to middle schools and, and read to kids all the time. And, lower schools and try to encourage them to read and one of the things especially in my experience what made me not want to read sometimes when I was in school because they make me read horse shit I don't give a fuck about Shakespeare Shakespeare is entirely overrated a lot of that shit just fucking sucked some of some of it's good I like some of it some of, yes, it, I don't. Some, some of it's good but some of it fucking is not good and it's fucking bad I remember being in school having to read The Good Earth and I literally could have bit through my wrist and committed suicide in that class because that fucking shit was awful if you give a kid a chance to read about something he might be interested in and he can learn how, how great reading can be. Because when, when I hear somebody tells me that they don't ever read, you know, I'm just like, that's just odd to me because I always like to read. I love to read. Like it, it could just take you to another place. It, it exercises it's, it's, your yeah, mind. Yeah, it's a lot different than watching something on TV where you don't have to do any thinking. Yeah, I mean, and, and if you could enhance your brain and enhance your mind, you're going to enhance your life. So when people tell me they don't read, I just, it's something that's hard for me to identify with. I want to fucking say, you're missing out. Cause, you know, you're and missing you know, out not, not all classic literature is going to appeal to everybody. No, a lot of the shit. Some shit is old and some shit is old Have you ever read Moby Dick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to slip my fucking wrist when I was reading it. It was, it was there. But hey, it's one of the classics. It's that fucking long. And the story could have what been in a damn... What about Midsummer's Night's Dream? You ever had to read that fucking book? Yeah, it made me fucking mad. That's, that's something that was written for girls or something, wasn't it? I didn't know anybody that liked it. I liked, uh, you know, there's some Shakespeare stuff I liked. I liked Othello. I liked uh, King Lear. Yeah, had moments... Like, I liked Hamlet. But were you ever wrapped up in any of those books? King Lear was one of my favorites. Were you wrapped up in it, though, like from beginning to end? Yeah, that one I was. Really? Yeah. It was just a good story. But, uh, you know, some of that stuff was kind of brutal. I didn't, you know, Romeo and Juliet, I didn't really give it was a It was an awful, one. awful love story. They barely knew each other. And fucking half the, half the story died. He, he, he lifted that from somebody, too. He didn't, that story wasn't his concept. I, 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 think, I, I think I've read something where uh, supposedly a lot of this stuff was. Yeah, I mean, it's just, there was gimmick infringement even back in the 1400s. Gimmick infringement. Yeah, but I was just thinking in school, man, if you let a kid, like, read some stuff that interests him. Like, I started reading comics when I was five years old, and I mm -hmm. couldn't even fucking read, but I was, like, looking through them and, you know, putting shit together. And that's just what made me read all the time. I'll recommend something for you. All right. All right, like I said, I didn't... I your, didn't. La your last recommendation didn't go up too well. Oh, uh, Luthez Hooker. No, the, um, uh, there was good history in that, which mm -hmm. you could sift through... But anyway, the uh, we'll like talk I, about that with Dr. Like Tom. I said, Herm, Herman Melville, uh, Moby Dick. I didn't like Moby Dick. It was way too wordy, way too much horseshit. I mean, the story was good. It, was, it had its parts, but it was just too long. But there's a book. I don't know if you've ever read it. It was like a no, novella or whatever you call it. The you know 100 pages. It's called Benito Serena. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read that? Read that. It's by Herman Melville. You could probably read it in a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. That's a good story. All right. Text me that because I'll Benito Serena. Well, cool. Well, we're trying to sound intelligent. We're throwing a lot of people off here. Yeah. What, that's, actually what, why we, that's actually why we became friends. We're going to ruin our image. Because of myths, that bullshit. <laughs> Intellectual sharing. That's so like Jericho. I was reading a damn uh, magazine, an article on quantum mechanics one time. And he kind of knew my backstory a little bit. He goes, he goes sometimes I forget you're smart. <laughs> sometimes. I was like, uh, okay. I was reading a damn, uh, I tweeted about this on Facebook that day. I was reading a damn article on uh, a, a new 
uh, thing with quantum uh, mechanics boy and I was like god damn I, th I think my head exploded yeah I bought a book one time in a bookstore a little you know book like this and it said Einstein's theory of relativity explained and I said hey here we go I've been wondering I about that this. I should have and I opened the book and the very first thing it says if, if you're not a, a quantum physicist you're not going to understand a fucking word of this and I went Nah, I'll get it. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Now, I was reading an article about how a light can be a wave and a, it's like a, a particle and a wave at the same time, and it can exist at the same time through quantum mechanics and all this kind of shit, and I was going, okay. And that's the thing, and I used to be really fucking smart. I wish I could go back. If I had quit taking bumps, I mean, if I had never started taking bumps, I wonder how, how smart I could have been. Concussions are not good for the brain, kids. I don't know if you guys have heard that or not. I've been hearing something about that. You notice real quick, the, the fucking media hasn't jumped all over the NFL. Anywhere, especially as quick, there's still time. But they have not jumped on the NFL like they jumped on WWE's ass over the Ben Watt situation. The, the blame seems to be on the NFL for concussions. I, I don't know. Yeah, but they were, they were you're, you're right, they, they had a field day with Chris Benoit. Yeah, them motherfuckers went for field day. They went berserk. All of us. All of us. Were Every fucking, fucking one people. of us. We all did it. Nancy Grace, where your ass at? Yeah, Chris. She said Chris Where's Benoit. Where's your big headed ass at now? What she said, Chris Benoit did it because he was no longer the ECW World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, some dumb shit. And somebody was on there and went, "That was like two years ago. What the fuck are you talking about?" God. What was she doing? Yelling at them fact checkers after that? Anyway, well, we're gonna be right back with the. Uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard, and next week I'm going to have to get a clip if you haven't seen it. I ain't even going to tell you what it is, but it's something I showed Mike earlier. I laugh my ass off every time I see it. We'll show it to you next week, and I want to get the DDP. Remind me to get the DDP Jake Roberts video for people to see. And like I said, we'll be back with Dr. Tom. And that's out. And we're back. Once again, we got to thank highspots.com, we got to thank RF Video, and we got to thank figure4apps.com for sponsoring the show and uh, helping us with these new innovations. That's a good looking show you got on there, kid. Joko Loco, baby. Joko Loco. Uh, once again, I'll be back uh, Clayton, North Carolina this Saturday, the 8th, Headlock for Autism. I'll be there. Uh, Mike will be there. He's selling uh, tickets for the Chinlock for Chuck event uh, that we're doing for our friend Chuck, who has his second bout with Hodgkins, uh, and he's fighting it, and we'll get more into We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Um, actually, we talked about that before. Right. But we'll talk about it even more. Uh, on, the get, on the line, Skyping in live, we have a very distinguished guest. Extinguished or distinguished? Distinguished. Very distinguished. If he guess. was extinguished, he'd be dead. I've been extinguished before. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I think my career's extinguished. <laughs> it is Dr. Tom Pritchard. Dr. Tom, thanks for being on Highway to Helms. Hey, thanks for being having me on Highway to Helms. Kind of like the highway I'm on anyway. <laughs> very, very, very close to the highway. I got to ask, what are you a doctor of? That's a real funny thing because Cornette always called me a doctor of desire, but there was other doctors that I have, and, and it was a partying and uh, running the road. So I've got a lot of doctors with my, uh, to my name, man, just so you know. I can't really divulge everything, but. Oh, yeah, a yeah. PhD in secrecy as well. That's a good one. Yes, I am a PhD in secrecy. Now, when did they start calling you Dr. Tom? Was that the Smoky Mountain days or before that? Well, it was before that, man. It's an interesting story. I don't know if you guys have time, but I'll try to make it brief if you got it. We'll make time. Okay, I knew you would, man. That, see, I was in Alabama, and Robert Fuller, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Robert. Oh, yeah. Okay, Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden were a tag team, and, and they happened to have this friend of theirs who was a... He was a rotund gentleman. He was kind of a fat guy. He wanted to be. Uh, he wanted to be in the business. Well, he would. He would travel with Robert, Jimmy, and the boys. And um, he was their traveling man, if you will. And uh, he wanted to be involved in the angle. So it was Robert and Jimmy, uh, Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden against Tommy and Johnny and Rich. And they did an angle in Birmingham, Alabama, with this guy at ringside. Uh, and they did an angle where they taped up Tommy's uh, feet and just beat the living hell out of Johnny, got juiced, the whole thing. This was at the end of the show, and then all three of these guys go up to the uh, stage where Gordon Soli is. It's Robert, Jimmy, and this big man um, who happened to be traveling with everybody. And they said, gosh, dog, we got our doctor in our corner now. Nothing's going to happen to our pretty faces. we got our doctor, he called Dr. Love. 
And that's how they end the show. And it's a great angle. Everybody, we do it on Monday night. It shows on Saturday. And Sunday morning, the FBI calls Robert. <laughs> you, that's never you good. You guys been looking for uh, this fella for a long time. He's he's was a fugitive, and uh, uh, he, he he likes snow. <laughs> a lot of skiing. Okay? Okay. And we did, too, at that time in Alabama. So, uh, anyway, they asked where he was. And come to find out, Robert thought was going to speak. He said, he's just one of these guys that comes in and out. We don't really know. We just used him for one week. So, he had to scrap the angle. But a couple of years before, I broke my leg, and I had these doctor pants that Sherry Martell gave me when she took care of me and, and uh, nursed me back to health. Uh, so, I wore the pants that week. I was riding with Jimmy, Robert, Jerry Stubbs, and I tried wearing those pants. And Robert's talking about this angle, how it's all out the window, and and we stopped to get a drink, and then Robert realized I had these pants on. It was, hot damn boy, you can be our doctor. Hell, that's great right there. So that's that's how I got my doctor's name. And we uh, we talked about it on the way all the way to the town. I said, we could always say I went to Baylor University, and I would have been a doctor, but I spent a little too much time in the pharmacy. And I laughed about it. But Robert actually said that on TV the next week. And I went, man. You know, so you got that name from the Tennessee stud, huh? you damn right. There yeah, you have it. You. That's how I came, Alabama. So, well, what? Yeah, t- where are you from? You're you're a Tennessee guy, right? I'm Texas. I'm oh, Texas. Now. Okay, yeah. you're in Tennessee now. Yeah, I'm in Knoxville, man. We just moved back uh, Halloween. Man, I went to a show when uh, I first got in the business. It was one of his shows, one of um, Robert Fuller's shows, and uh-huh. it was downtown Knoxville, and it was in some kind of like civic auditorium, or I don't know what the building I'll is. See him, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that, I mean, this was back in the, when the territories were doing good, and they sold that place out, and that crowd was hot, and it was awesome, man. I mean, Doug Furness was over like crazy. He yeah, came out to that Rocky crazy. Top, you know, they were playing that Rocky Top, and uh-huh. uh, man, that place was going nuts. That show was awesome. Uh, I can't remember who all was on it. Uh, Nelson Royal trained me, and he was the one that took us out there, and he was booked on it against somebody. But like Terry Gordy was on it, Big Sid was on it. Uh I don't know. It was a good show. I mean, well, it was tough. Yeah, it was. It was continental wrestling. We used right. to go to the Coliseum. They, they, the Coliseum's still up, and uh, uh, there's a few. St- there's a few shows that run in there that I think teenagers just ran in there. They have roller derby in there. But uh, during that time, man, continental wrestling was hot. It was. Uh, that, that was crazy. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was awesome. Uh, you remember Ron Wright? Of course. Yeah, Ron Wright lives around here somewhere uh, outside yeah, he of. Up in, up in Kingsport. I back then he was living near Durham, North Carolina, and he was our, this buddy of mine. Do you know Chuck Coates? You remember him? Yes. He uh, yeah. he's he was my best friend. We went to college together, but he worked with Ron somewhere, and uh, we rode with Ron up there and everything. But it was cool. Was uh, uh, Ron one of the old outlaws, man? He's one of the old old school guys. He was doing that gimmick back then where he was in the wheelchair. With Tony Anthony, yeah. Yeah, with Tony Anthony, and he'd jump up out of the chair and do something and get back in it. It was it was great. Was uh, was Sid was Sid Vicious doing the uh, Lord Humongous at this time, or was he yeah. Sid? No, he was Lord Humongous. Yeah, he, he yeah, he, this was, and then that was during Eddie Gilbert's run. And he was yeah, Shane Douglas was there doing something with Sid, where I don't remember what they were doing, but uh, yeah, Sid wore that gimmick, and that that was back in the you know kayfabe days, and he wore that mask all night. You know, I never, <laughs> I never saw his face. I just, he he came through that curtain. He was kind of scary looking back then. I mean, he kind of slimmed down. He was huge back then, and uh, he's scary looking without the mask. Uh, yeah, he, was gonna he, scary. He, I was going to say he's scary looking either way. But you know, he got he, he had that temper. That, he had that temper. If you if you bark back at him, he he kind of cowered down. It's one thing he'll bark, 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 but if you bark back, that's spe- like any other dog. Especially if you got a squidgy a squidgy in your hand. Well, yeah, come, well, yeah. You heard that story, didn't you? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, my, I heard it from Mike firsthand. I, heard it I, I was in the bar that night when that happened. Okay, cool. Well, I, I, I didn't really see it. I knew something was going on, but then we figured it out afterwards. But, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, well, not as crazy if you knew Sid. I saw Ken Wayne back in down in Dothan, Alabama. I mean, we, Kenny and I were, we were talking in the farm center, and we, the Heels dressing room was just right next door to the baby faces. So I slipped over and talked, and Kenny and I were talking, and, and Sid was just standing there, and, and we were talking about boxing of all things. And uh, we said something about Roberto Duran didn't do anything after he said no mas and Sugar Ray Leonard, right? And Sid goes, uh, Kenny said, yeah, he never really did anything after that. Sid goes, yeah, he did. He won a bunch of titles after that. And Kenny said, yeah, but it was just like, you know, little independent titles, like that lost stuff. 
and Sid went off and goes, hey, you want to fight me, man? I mean, hell, you can grab that stick right there if you want to. And Kenny goes, hey, calm down, big man. We weren't even talking to you. Sid said, well, I'm sorry for interrupting your conversation. And walked out. And we looked at each other and said, what just happened there, man? This big guy's going to put your ass in the I'm sorry for interrupting your conversation. So right then I knew that Sid might, might be a badass. I will challenge him. But at the same time, I think if you challenge him, you go, man, man, I don't want any. Yeah. Unless he's drunk and has scissors. Yeah. Are you a are you a Dallas Cowboy fan? Um, you know what? Yes and no. I don't really watch a lot of pro ball. My wife's an Alabama fan, so I mean, I had to watch Bama beat Georgia, and and I had to watch Bama kick the living hell out of Auburn. So I mean, they yeah. went to the Iron Bowl. I maybe set the odds. Dallas Cowboy fan? Yeah, of course. If we're the Texas, of course. I just hoping you're a Cowboy fan because I'm a Redskins fan. <laughs> How'd they do last night? They won. They beat the Giants. They beat that New York football Giants yeah. just last night. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think you're too much. We got, we got to get all our bragging in while we can. It comes along fucking rarely for us as a Redskins fan. So. It's all good, man. Well, very cool. I know you're involved with something called Next Level Wrestling. Where is that, where is that out of? Yeah, well, Next Level Wrestling is something that we're starting in January. Devin Driscoll and myself. Uh, Devin has a gym called Next Level Training. It's right next to Cotton Knight Joe in Knoxville. Uh, most famous, one of the most famous name of uh, Mark's in Knoxville. It's at 11210 Outlet Drive. Uh, we just had a casting call last night with over 25 people who showed up because we're doing a reality show in conjunction with the school. Now, who isn't doing a reality show these days? That's question, right? Everybody's got something going on. But this is something new, hopefully. It's a national production company. I'm not at liberty to say. They won't say their name yet. Uh, but we have another casting call December 15th, which is a Saturday for people who didn't make it last night. We had two people travel from Georgia to this call last night. And uh, so we're going to have another one December 15th from 1 to 4 at 11210 Outlet Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you see the Cotton Eye Joe sign from the freeway, you can get there. And uh, then we're starting the school December 7th. We have an open house December, or pardon me, January 7th. And we have a house when is welcome to listen to what we have to say on January 3rd. So uh, a lot of things going on. I don't know how it's going to go, but I've got a few. We're going to start out and keep going better. And you're going to be a hands-on trainer? or I mean, what, what is your involvement going to be? I am be the hands-on B trainer. The guy. I mean, other people come in as well. We've already got some best set up to come in. Uh, it's been like a six month course at the beginning where we evaluate everybody and we're going to go about my, the curriculum, uh, which is a curriculum, by the way. We follow that. Everyone will get with these three months to sign up. And we'll go three months, evaluate everyone. We may take a month off. We may continue on. But we're going to just uh, kind of play about and see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to be hands on. And, Show them the way I do. That's very cool. You, I know you spend a lot of time in WWE developmental. Like, uh, let me just, what? Who are some of the guys that you found, you discovered, um, in uh, OVW and all those developmental territories or whatever that you helped? Talent relations. As, well, you know, you, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to say I found and trained all of them, but I really didn't. I mean, they, <laughs> you know, there were some guys that recommended, but I mean, it was a combination. of Really, when Jr. was at a developmental, uh, he was a guy who, who would say yeah for me. But when I was in developmental, when I first started developmental, I would have the office in Stanford tapes back then, VHS tapes mm -hmm. would come to me, so I got to look at them first. Now, right down of who I thought Jr. and maybe look at. But also, Jr. had his hand in things as well, and he had his favorites and he wanted. So I can't. I mean, uh, Mark Henry, Brock, Michael Malbrick, Brockus, they were the first three that started to And from there, it was, uh, uh, I believe, some of the guys from TV, and some of the guys that uh, Jake Hart had seen before, and uh, they got this again uh, to come. For, so, I mean, I, I wish I could credit for Edge, Christian, the Hardy, Shane Holmes, and those guys. Uh, you got blamed for the Ducks, right? Right. I was there when you bottled it back. Well, I was at what you call summer camp. You would have been proud. But I heard it. Yes, when I was on. You guys were tracks. Uh, stuff. But anyway, 
I don't want to think of any memories. Um, Got me a free lunch that day. I know. Anyway, but I, some of the guys who got in there were good. I want to. I, there was there was the uh, two guys. It was Bobby Rude, the other one on the front all right. Um, that I wanted to hire Rude. They hired all. Uh, so, you know, there were times when they hired guys. Molina was another one that wanted to hire. And for a while, she couldn't shoot. Sure, she still could. Uh, but through the years, the people who we commended, and they always someone who started off on a blade on the or not. So, hmm. then time. It's very strange. Uh, the last yeah. time I was down in uh, Florida, uh, right after my neck surgery in 2008. So. Uh, yeah, 2008 was when I was coming back. Um, they asked me to, like, you know, while I was down there, you know, just keep an eye out. I went down there, like, full evaluating. I was like, but just keep an eye out. You know, anybody you see that stands out, just let us know. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem, whatever. And so they came and asked me, and, like, right off the bat, I said, Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler. I said, yeah. Okay. I said, he don't even need to be here. And so they uh, didn't take my advice at all and brought up Ricky Ortiz instead. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The same thing happened to us. Because they wouldn't even ask us, and when they wouldn't ask us, they take the other guys. They no. Yeah, because they 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 asked me about Ricky, and I was like, "Oh, he's exciting," because uh, he did have a lot of energy. But I was like, "Hi, oh, you know, he he's got a ways to go, but he's got a lot of energy." And they go, and I was like, "But Dolph don't even need not Dolph at the time." I said, "Nick don't even need to be here." I said, "He's gonna get hurt down here, and uh, he's he's fucking ready for TV." And so yeah, they, they, okay, and they didn't listen to me at all. And now look at him; he's main event with Cena. Exactly, and, then, and you know how that works. I mean, exactly. Last so time. Oh, no, we do the monthly reports. We say someone's ready to go. Most of it's me saying it. Uh, anybody else, uh, anybody who does anything to it, came in, then that's their opinion. Pretty much of it. Uh, so, but they would they would take what they want to take to do. And they still do that. So. JR was always big on those amateur wrestler guys, wasn't he? Yeah, so is Rick. And, and I get that. We have a, a, All football players. All football players, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll talk so, about, we got to go to a commercial real quick, Tom. We'll talk about that right when we come back because I want to hear more about these developmental stories. So we'll be back in uh, 15, 20 seconds, whatever. Two and two. It'll be instantaneous for the viewers. Outstanding. And we're back, and that was a little video from Top Rope Belts. Top Rope Belts is probably one of the premier championship belt makers. Here's a very close, close little shot of the Hurricane title. You want me to get it? Huh? It's over there. It's over there, man. It's over there. Don't, 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 be, don't be touching my shit. I play leave with leave my shit alone. Yes. And back online, we got still Dr. Tom Pritchard, the doctor of pharmaceuticals you wanted to say thugonomics didn't you i wanted to say thugonomics the doctor <laughs> love the doctor style no that was slick the doctor of yeah. ribbage how about the yeah. doctor of ribbage so anyway we're talking about uh we're talking about developmental and all that great great stuff um lance, lance storm told me one time too that at toward the, the end of his run in developmental they would just put the guys they thought sucked at the top and uh to see if they would bring those in instead <laughs> What do you got to use uh, reverse I mean, psychology on them? Yeah, the yeah, bugs, yeah. the bugs bunny psychology. Yeah, I mean, because you would have some guys who you just saying, you asking yourself, what are you thinking, man? I'm bringing them in, but uh, so I stopped thinking. I just said whatever you want, but they'd ask our opinion. No, nah, man, they would take, they would take just the opposite. So why? I don't know. Why, you, are you, why are you putting us in charge if you don't listen to what we say? Now you were just down. You were working in uh back for Florida Championship Wrestling FCW NXT as it is now uh, for a little while. When did that end? That ended uh, this past May. Past May. Uh, there for five years. Yeah, five years. And then uh, uh, this past May, I found out you have to be careful because um, I don't know if you've experienced this or not in your life because uh, you can't be too honest with everybody. They don't like that all the time. And. Uh, yeah, I, I think you might have experienced that once or twice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, and it's one of those things, too, I think, when a new administration comes in and somebody takes over, they want their team and their guys in there. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's fine. I get that. But uh, you have to also understand what you're saying to who you're saying it to. And I found out sometimes I was probably uh, saying things I shouldn't have said. But, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have any regrets. It happened, and it is what it is, and um, they're going to get what they get, and I hope they do fantastic. I wish them all the best of God bless them. Very good. Very good. That, that, that's the anti-Shane Helms approach. What would you tell him? Go fuck I'd tell him to go fuck yourself. That's no, I'd never say that, man. God bless them. I uh, actually uh, I like what they're doing in FCW recently. Uh, over the last maybe year and a half, though, it seemed like they were bringing in. Uh, they kind of got away from looking for the football players and just the guys that had never actually even seen a wrestling ring because they were doing that uh, the last couple years of my tenure in WWE, which ended in two thousand. When did I give? Two thousand ten. Last couple years I was there. Uh, I mean, they would just literally bring guys in that had never seen a wrestling ring. Not only you know weren't fans of it but didn't even know it existed and i was just well, like how in the now. fuck do you train these guys they're, they're doing that now though but they, and, they, and they did that they're doing it again right now they're they're replenishing with guys who have never seen a wrestler really yeah yeah wow. and you know the guy that, that is head of no oh, man i won't go yeah well, yeah well uh the guy who's uh heading up the talent development part um really doesn't know wrestling he and it's not a crime man it's not like you have to be a a chef to understand a good meal and eat a good meal. I get that part, but this guy doesn't really know anything about wrestling. He doesn't know anything about wrestlers. He doesn't know anything about developmental. He knows nothing about what the business is, and this isn't like any other sport or business. This is a unique industry, and you're coming in trying to compare it to volleyball is pretty hard to do for a lot of people. So uh, they're bringing in guys who – couldn't make it into the first sport they wanted to do, which is football. So then they say, well, listen, all you have to do is come in, and we'll teach you how to do this. In fact, they brought a guy from Australia. This was a Ty Bailey hire, and he didn't know anything about wrestling, and he told Ty that. And Ty said, don't worry, they'll teach you. Another thing Ty did, a, a guy who used to work out with Batista in the gym, great body, came in for a tryout one day. We could tell it's not for him. Because he couldn't grasp locking up. Locking up. Couldn't do it. Over a month. And literally a month. I take that back. One month after Ty came in and hired him. And Steve Byrne actually said, Ty, don't hire this guy. He really doesn't have it. He doesn't feel it here. He's got two kids. He doesn't want this. It's not for him. After a month, he quit. He, he just been working out with Dave Batista. And Dave says, you ought to try wrestling. Well, now they have a bunch of football players. If you go to the website, because I look. Uh, guys who really haven't seen a wrestling ring. Guys who, if they could, are not going to make it to the pros or you know, out of college, they went in and recruited them. And I, that's what I hear is going on. And I'm out there, so I can't speak firsthand. But I guess I probably just got excited because they hired Tyler Black and Ambrose and uh, a couple other guys <laughs> and Pac. They hired him. And I guess I just might – maybe they're trying to keep a balance. We're hiring some really good guys, and they want to hire a bunch of shit, and maybe – uh, want, that way it won't go one way or the other. My experience with that half the time is the wrestlers they'll hire, they want the, those guys to train the football players, and then they exactly. fire the wrestlers and put the football players on the roster. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. you got those guys to work with the guys who can't work, and then the guys who can work get hurt. And you just keep bringing the bodies up. That's exactly what it was. Well, I know that. I know that's what they did with that girl. That girl, uh, Sarah Del Rey. Now, Sarah De- yeah. Del Rey is a really great female uh, worker, and they hired her. And I was like, wow, that's. Uh, I was really interested in that. I was like, man, I'd, I'd like to see her up there. But she's just training. Yeah, but you yeah, exactly. training the models. But y'all, I mean, I don't need to tell either one of y'all this. You know, you can spend five minutes with somebody and tell if they're never going to get it. Yeah. Generally yeah. yeah. I mean, you, Tom, did you train? Were you in there training Air, uh, Kurt Angle? Yes. I mean, Kurt, first came in, yeah, Kurt, first, Kurt, Kurt picked it up like that, didn't he? He did, because I told him when we first locked up, I said, Kurt, number one, I had nothing to prove, so don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> There's any way you can not do that. I, take you down. I, I don't want to try and take you down. I have nothing here, man, so just please, we're, we're going to lock up like this. He locked it. He had it, man. He knew. But he had been around like ECW a little bit. He had been around some, some of the stuff. But you, and at first, you know, he didn't really care for it because that was – 
I think it was beneath him. But then once he found out what this was, and, and not everybody was trying to mess with him, uh, and I was, I, man, I wasn't even trying to mess with him. But when I walked up with Kurt the first time, I knew that he knew. Yeah, he, he did. And what do you attribute that to other than he just had a knack for it? He was a fan. Yeah. I mean, he didn't want to talk to him. Is that not 100%? Of, of a difference in somebody if they spent their yeah. life watching you almost don't have to train them i agree and I, I, one of the major things for me not everybody agrees with this but i think if you're not a fan of this and you don't know what it's like growing up to understand the feeling that when you watch somebody and you get lost in that magic you know watching someone work and you get lost in it and you watch magic go and you know how that feels even though you might know it's it's predetermined but you're still getting into the match if you don't know that feeling how are you going to make somebody else know that feeling yeah. i think kirk got that well i'll say this i i was in louisville um and i worked with his brother i mean i don't mean this is any disrespect you know oh, to eric but there's a big there's a night and day difference between him and kirk you mm -hmm. know and it was you know eric was trying and you know all that stuff but it was just one of them things where if i could have said what i wanted to i would have said you know you probably need to forget about this take two weeks well, off and quit yeah, I mean, it was just, yeah. you know, there there was no teaching him. He wasn't going to pick it up. But, you know, he was just stiff as a board. He was out there, you know, a, just a crowbar. I mean, you know, it was just, you know, you just don't get it, man. Well, it's the same thing. It's like a guy like Kelly Kaninsky, you know, his dad was a world champion, and, and he and his brother tried to wrestle. It's just because you are a fan doesn't mean you're going to be great. But the ones who are passionate, who really want to follow, who really want to learn it, to be a, a student in the game, I, I think they can. Eric was a different kind of cat. You know, he was just a different kind of guy that uh, some have it, some don't. But Kurt had it, and Eric just, uh, I, I think Eric just couldn't couldn't grasp it. Well, I met Shane. I don't know if you ever heard his story. I met Shane when he was 13 years old at an independent wrestling show. And I, he was 13, and I was about 18 or 19. And he got in the ring. I mean, literally a 13-year-old kid that weighed 85 pounds, and he, he could wrestle better than guys right. I've known for, that have been doing it for 10 years. I had taught myself how to lock up with my little G.I. Joe dolls. I knew, exactly. I knew that this went for the collar. I knew that this went for the elbow. And I'd literally been watching it since I was five years old. I knew I would do the arm drag with the left hand. I would hip toss with the right. I didn't know why, but I knew that shit. Because <laughs> you've seen, them, seen it done a million times. Yeah, and so that's my big my biggest uh, problem with trying to train people is because I watched it so long and it came easy to me that when people can't do it, I can't understand why. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, that's where the patience thing comes in, you know, and that's what I had to learn as a trainer. That's See, but hard. that's why I couldn't be a doctor, because I got I no patience. patience. Right. You got no patience. That's good. That's a good one, man. That's, that's why you're the doctor, because you got patience for these motherfuckers. I got it. That's good, man. Get them in and out. But that, that's what I'm saying, man. I did it for a while, and then all of a sudden, you know, when you get in that corporate world and corporate people want to tell you what's right and wrong and how to train people and what you should do and shouldn't do, and you need to a one-year curriculum because you don't have a plan. See, I had a plan, but this guy couldn't see my plan because it wasn't in black and white. So, and I tried to explain to him, we adjust accordingly. Because you're sending me people with no experience, then you got guys with five years of experience, then you got guys who are ready to go, like like uh, Rollins and Ambrose. Yeah. And, uh, okay, why were they in development? Why? They didn't need to be there. Just like talking about Nick. Nick, Nick why was he there? Okay, then you had people who needed to be there, but we got to train all these people equally. So how do I do a curriculum for that? Well, I did, by God, and then you fired my ass. So <laughs> that wasn't the only reason. But, uh, I mean, that kind of stuff, man, I, it, it does get to you after a while. And I tried to have patience with guys who come in from football or another sport. That's not their first sport. That's that's something that some guys said, hey, man, we'll pay you. Okay, they paid the guys 500 bucks, but they probably paid these guys a grand. You know, so it's still 50 grand a year, whatever it is. But some guys got paid even more. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you how do you look at that to somebody who loves a business, comes in there, going to train all day, bust their ass, and look at another guy who doesn't love the business, just there for the money and just there for the glory, and you're there to help him get over, and you get hurt, and they just say, ah, and you, that's okay, we'll find somebody else. That's kind of where, you know, I kind of lie on the sympathy of the people who love the business, not right. the guys that are going to come in at a six-foot-four 285 pound ex football player that couldn't make it his first sport. So now he's going to do this uh, phony sport that they tell him. And that's what I like to do is tell him how phony it's really not. Because when they take that first bump or they hit the ropes and then they find out that they're sore the next day, that's when they get a little more appreciative. But yeah, some of them don't. But I'll tell you what bums I mean, out a lot of the talent, too, is when you're a guy that's been wrestling on the indies for seven or eight years and you finally get a developmental deal 
and you're getting three hundred and fifty dollars a week, and they hire some football player that you know can't even lock up right, and he's getting uh, you know like you said a grand a week, or, or even well, maybe, maybe even more. Maybe two fifty or two twenty five hundred a week. Yeah, or, or three grand a week. And you know that gets out. Those, you know people find that stuff out. I remember when they brought John Cena into Louisville. I was there, and if you know what I heard was true, he was on a pretty low-paying developmental contract. But I, they, think, I think he's still low-paid. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, he he made up for it. But then they had guys in there that were, you know, like, well, you know, I don't want to put Brock in that group because he kind of made them their money back. But they had some other guys like Brian Keck and some. I don't remember all the rest. Yeah. Of them. There was four or five, you know, guys that were they're paying them a couple of grand a week, you know, and they they were useless. And then some. Yeah, and then they, they, you know, we'd be down there working out or something, and they'd be like, hey, uh, you know, Rob Conway, will you go over there and uh, work with Brian Keck? And Rob would, Rob was one of them guys who would get pissed about it and go, yeah, sure, I'll work with him. He only makes three times what I do. You sure. Know? Well, yeah, what do you want me to yeah. teach plus you're, working in, plus, you're working in a shithole in Jeffersonville. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't the, pl- the palatial arena they're working in now. I mean, you're working in a, in a tin building, you know, it's, it's pretty small, but that's where you paid your dues, man. Yeah. If you love the business, you love the business. And those guys are bitching about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I heard the bitches. I heard, I heard the complaints, man. That's why they had to move to the nice place they're at now. To satisfy but, the prima donnas? Huh? To make the prima donnas happy? It's, well, yeah, and plus, you know, John's deal was what Spence going to think if you ever came down here and saw this this rat hole where you're training. Yeah, well, well, Vince okay. does always like to progressively build. So I knew, too, even when FCW, I was like, man, he's not going to, especially the way he is uh, the last couple of years, he wants everything to just have this global fucking feel to it. I knew FCW was going to become NXT. I knew there was a, right. a moment that was going to happen. Well, once once uh, Hunter took over, we kind of had a feeling, too. And people said I was just paranoid. And I told them being paranoid sometimes means just knowing all the facts. And I knew all the facts when that took place, man. And you're and right. Having, it was, and having it was a little foresight. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, it's good for what it was. And then eventually, uh, you know, it usually goes in five years. You know, OBW, HWA, five years. And they go to Deep South, five years. And they go to FCW, five years. So uh, whether they're getting ready to move to Orlando or not, who knows? Mm-hmm. But there's that rumor going around. That's going to gonna be interesting. I think, that, you know, speaking of money, when you talk about money a while ago, and I just this popped in my head, when, when I was in WCW, you know, uh, my first contract there was was a thousand a week, and then we would get paid for house shows too. So, it ended up yeah. working fine because with three count, we were none of the top guys would show up at the house show, so we would we were working all the time. <laughs> so, so it actually worked out pretty good. But I know Tank Abbott was making two fifty a year. Damn, so, exactly. So we we're out there doing all the work. He's fucking awful. And as a person, I enjoyed talking to him, but and I tried to talk to him about the business. For maybe 15 seconds on occasion and that shit was going nowhere so I was just like eh alright I'll talk to you later so yeah Tank Abbott was a uh, he was crazy as shit too so I was always kind yeah, of worried was. he was going to flip the fuck out yeah but I mean you know they they knew how to keep him uh, where he wouldn't flip out hopefully he said you know, he did say on. something good to me one time too though because I was like well why don't you go to I said because uh, he was talking to me he knew I, I put most of the matches together with me Shannon and Evan and so he's like, I want to, I want to do more. I want to get him, you know. And so he kind of had his heart in the right place. And I was like, well, why don't you go to the power plant, and, you know, and uh, train with those guys and and you know, learn some new stuff. And he goes, he goes, well, I offered to, but they won't pay me no more for it. And I was, right. And I was like, well, that's, I was like, that's what so sad, man. They, they said, don't want to learn. He's like, well, they I mean, he said they hired me knowing what I know. He said they hired me at this level. So if they want me to do more work, they got to pay me more. Right. And so he kind of, in a way, had a point. I was uh-huh. like, All right, well. My point would have been you're fired. Well, yeah, but, but there again, you got a guy who came from uh, what Ultimate Fighting or whatever. He had his deal. And he was having fun. And he was having, you know, was living a life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at 250 a year, why should you go down and train? You know, he would say it, but if you really meant it, he'd do it. Well, and that, an example of that is, remember Lisa Marie? Lisa Marie Barrett? Oh, yeah. Lisa exactly. Marie, remember they brought her in? She was with that other, that blonde so chick. Yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, she saw the writing on the wall that that thing was probably fixing to wind down, and she went to, I think she went to JR or went to, maybe came to you or something and said, send me to Memphis, I want to train. She uh, she actually went to JR, then she went to Vince, and Vince didn't even know who she was. She was just part of the whole train. Right. And she told Vince, she, I remember she said, I'm going down to Memphis to train. He went like, well, that's really nice. <laughs> who, who are you? Yeah, that's great. 
But had she just kept her, you know, had she not said anything or anything, that would have been the end of her, probably. Right. Yeah, but now here she is. She's still on TV, you know, 10 or 12 years later doing well. I, I bet Vince was trying to figure out who she was going, she's too old for Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> so who who is this? Oh, wait a minute here. Hold on. Uh, yeah, but that's the difference, man. That is the difference between somebody who wanted to do it and fell in love with the business backstage, who fell in love with the craziness, the insanity going on, man. Because you know it's insane back there. It's insane on the road. It's insane just trying to find your way. You know, Jimmy Yang's last run <laughs> in the fucking company. Oh, uh, he was at ringside. He was like, we're in Cincinnati or Columbus or somewhere. And he's at the ringside. And Vince's like, where you been? And Jimmy goes, you fired me. He goes, what? <laughs> Yeah, so he got hired yeah. back. Like Vince didn't even know he was going. What was he sitting in the no, car? You know what? And then, no, he just came to visit. And was oh. at the ringside, and uh, the, I don't. I mean, not at ringside. Hey, just... hey, I, I gotta, I, I gotta ask you about something. Actually, in two thousand, whenever it was, when me and Murray were, you know, on the road with everybody, I think we were in Baltimore, and Dwayne Gill showed up. Yeah. Okay, and he walks, <laughs> he walks in the back, and he walks up to Bruce. And he's like, hey, Bruce. And he's like, hey, Dwayne, how you doing? And he's like, I had this idea that I could do, you know, this, this, and this. And Bruce is like, eh, you know, that sounds good. I could tell he was kind of blowing him off or whatever. And Dwayne said, well, you know, you guys are still paying me to sit at home. So, you know, I should be doing something, Bruce, but we're doing what? And, then, <laughs> and I, think, I think that was the end of that. And he went riding? Uh, yeah. I think there was a glitch in payroll, and he fixed a glitch. Let me tell you something. There's been a few glitches, and not just in the payroll. <laughs> So there, there's things that, you know, that I found out when I, when I went to the office side of things. This is a great big corporation. This yeah. is a machine. This is, this is a monster. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take one peg out, put another one in. It, it doesn't matter. But when I saw and heard some of the stuff I saw and heard, um, I scratched my head and said, this is a machine that's working like a tricycle. You know what I mean? There were times when in, in the talent relations meetings, and I, I, I guess, I don't know, man, if I can really think of anything specific right now, but I just remember coming out of some of those meetings going, I can't believe someone like this who has this much power is letting this go. It's kind of like when they let, I think, Rock's contract expire. And and how do you do that? How does that happen? If you're, if you're, if you're supposed to secure these contracts, and this is your folder you have, that's what you should Man, it's a guy like Rock. You let, him, you let his contract expire? Yeah, that's a biggie there, isn't it? And, well, you would think, especially if <laughs> you want to kind of hold on to that, but the guy who was supposed to be holding on to it, yeah, just a little bit, it wasn't really looking at that too too strong, sort of too closely, I guess, because it expired, and nobody knew until... He wasn't was there anymore? Better. Huh? Until he wasn't there anymore? Well, that's what I mean. I think they faxed a letter to do something, and then finally... That's when, that's when the proverbial shit hit the fan. And uh, it was like, what do you mean expired? How did that happen? Who's in charge of this? Oh, John? <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, just, and, and some of the other little glitches. Like you said, you know, Jimmy got Jimmy was released. Vince didn't know. I still don't have the stuff. Well, I don't know that. I don't know about right now. But sometimes they tell him what they just wanted to hear. Yeah, I think there's definitely some things that, you know I mean? I, I, I got a couple little businesses that I deal with, and I can't keep up with all that shit. I right. double book myself all the time as far as the wrestling in, doing this show. I'm, you know, it's complicated. I, I couldn't imagine. It's uh, tricky. I couldn't imagine being Vince McMahon, all the different little details, nuances well, of that corporation that he has to deal with. Yeah, and I think because he's such a micromanager, he wants to be involved in everything, man. But you can't. You can't remember. Yeah, it is. No. Yeah. I, I know one of his favorite lines was, "If I knew what he did, I'd fire him." And a couple of right. times, a couple That's of times, probably a shoot. Too, a couple of times, I believed him. <laughs> if I knew what he did, I'd fire him. Yeah, yeah exactly. I ain't, I ain't gonna tell you then. Him, he don't even work here. Because I don't think he does shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unless they find you in an elevator falling down. Anyway, that ah, wasn't for you, Mike. <laughs> hey, that was the other one. That was the other. No, I'm not saying a word. That's just it. unless you just caught red-handed, man. <laughs> Sometimes you're okay. The, uh, been, so. Now, the curriculum book, the curriculum, not a book, although it is in book form, and I'm flashing sure. it up on the screen as well. Uh, okay. That can be found at uh, drtompritchard.com. Am I correct? That is correct. It's also on amazon.com, and it's in Kindle form. But really what it is is a curriculum kind of giving a uh, 
a year's worth of training uh, regimen. And um, so it's not necessarily a book that you can read. It's not a biography or anything like that. It's just some stories. It's got some lists in it, uh, how to do, you know, dressing room etiquette, uh, turning over you, 10 things you should uh, have to, uh, 10, necess 10 necessities for wrestling. Thank you. 20 basic rules, remember? I know you can't see that. But just little things. I mean, um, compilation things that I put together. And I, the first line in the forward, or the first you know, the deal is, uh, you have your way, I have my way. As for the right way, the correct way, the only way, it does not exist. So everybody does it this way or that way. And that's why you don't want cookie cutter. You don't want to be the same as everybody else. You might throw an arm drag different. You might grab a head lock different. As long as you get the basic movement and everybody's safe and you're facing the way you need to be facing, I'm not going to say this is wrong, this is right. You know, just a simple, there's different ways to grab a grip. One's one way. Okay, does it work this way? I mean, there's some things that are universal, the left side. You know, you don't hit a tackle on your right shoulder. Those are universal things. But the other stuff, if you put your flavor on it, we'll show you the basics. If you put your spin on it, that's what makes the, the business business. You know what I mean? No, that's, got, that's the problem. Yeah. With, I, I like to read books about wrestling and stuff, and a lot of guys are out there saying, you know, it should be like this and it shouldn't be like that. You remember who told us that that night? There is no right and wrong. Right. Tully Blanchard. Oh, yeah. Remember exactly. That? He said there is no right and wrong. It's just, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Well, St yeah, Steve Kern had a good line. He said, wrestling is all opinions. You got opinion. your opinion, and I got okay. mine. We agree with that, too. It's now, opinion. anywhere in your book, does your dog win the world championship? Uh, no. Does, no. You is, know why? Because you the, didn't get Luthez to train him. I, I saw that, man. I, I saw you were talking about the, the punch in the ball. I forgot about that. And I went back and looked, and I said, oh, man. So, uh, have you ever seen Johnny Valentine punch a bull in the face and knock him unconscious? <laughs> no, but I've seen Johnny Valentine punch Paul Curry in the face. <laughs> Maybe that's what he was talking Maybe about. Maybe that was a story. Maybe he just fucked it up somehow. I Maybe was read, I was reading that shit on the airplane, going, "You, you are fucking kidding me!" If you could open that window on that plane, that book would have gone out, wouldn't it? I, I would have still been holding the book while I threw the book out. I was like, well, "This no, motherfucker I mean, does not expect me to believe that this human being punched a bull in the face." And stopped it from doing whatever the fuck he wanted it to do. Well, you know, all respect for those I old think legends it could have from been, back in the. It could have been one, a boy that was on one of those merry-go-rounds outside the Walmart, and he still couldn't stop the motherfucker. See what people fail to realize is those legendary guys like Thez and you know, I mean, all of them and uh, Ed the Strangler Lewis. I mean, they were all great and they deserve all this respect, but they yeah. were still workers. <laughs> to it then. Well, never forget that. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, you know, who's who's around to dispute the story? Yeah, really. You know, so, <laughs> that's what I mean. They're all either dead. I guess we could ask May be... Young. Yeah, May yeah, May, May Young. Still... Little... Yeah. Huh? I said we could ask May Young. Oh, you know what? I've asked her. I've asked her. She wanted a drink, and, and she forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so Luthes ain't got to worry about her talking. Oh my God, man! But yeah, I, I, and there's some great wrestling books out there. I just got the Houston wrestling book. Uh, Pete Burkle's wrote, and that's uh, that's got some history in it. This full shit too, so <laughs> really, all your mind. Yeah, we no, got we got a buddy. One. We got a buddy of ours that kind of believes all, all the old timers, and and I. Uh, I think it's a lot of it's out of respect. He really respects them, and I respect them too. But I also, I also respect the work. Uh -huh. I respect the work, right. and I knew bullshit when I hear it. And I was right. just trying to tell him one time. He's talking about some guy that was supposedly such a great wrestler and all this shit, but he had no training in, uh, you know, the shoot style, scholastic, collegiate, uh, amateur style wrestling. And, and he was drunk. And he was and drunk. He was blind. And he was blind. And we'll leave, leave that at that. <laughs> And right. I wasn't trying to put myself over, but I was like, dude, I got seven years. I got 22 gold medals. If this motherfucker has never wrestled before, if he's anywhere my weight, I can beat him. I promise you. Mm -hmm. But he just wasn't buying nah, he wasn't going to hear that. And I was right. like, listen, even back then, they had this big event around every four years. The Olympics. Called uh -huh. the Olympics. That if you're the best wrestler in the world, you can go there and win this fucking shiny medal. They'll and do it. They you do don't it. believe it, ask Kurt Angle. They do it, Kurt. You don't hear me disputing any of his shit, do you? No. I don't dispute him. You want to bring up Jack Briscoe? All right. Yeah, Jack Briscoe will fuck my ass up. <laughs> Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne, even now. He'll beat you to death. Is it, Vern Gagne still around? Yeah. Yeah, he's still alive. 
Okay. Yeah, barely. That guy that was alive. fucking with him in the old folks' home ain't though. Yeah, well, I mean, see what he did, see where he went. I know, I saw him, man. That's all right. That, uh, just don't put me in old folks' home. I'm not gonna. <laughs> not with Vern anyway, folks. especially with Vern. No, yeah, I don't want to be right. Don't drop me on my head. Yeah, no kidding, man. No. But, but you, the whole thing, real quick, just just to, to follow up on that, man. The whole thing with those old timers, it, it's like. They like telling the stories, and I was I was kind of broken by Paul Bosch, who's another old timer, and and Lou talks about slapping him in his book. If you read it, uh, it you got to go back to some of that stuff. And and Paul was a great storyteller, and half the crap he said was false. <laughs> I'm not going to say lies, but they might have been exaggerated a little bit. And that's what made the old timers so good. Somebody called me the other day, man, and just said. The problem with this generation now is they don't have the stories because there was no territories. You're not traveling by car. You're not, you know, doing what we did back in, in the territories. I, and I'm talking about, I got in, I started in 1979. So that was the tail end of everything would start to close in 85 when Vince just, you know, scorched the earth. And we got to travel with the cars and on the planes. And when you, when you got on the plane, you were double jacking seven, and you had two of these, four of those, and seven of these. And, and it's, that was the way it was. Yeah, and that's where the old timers survived. <laughs> I, I got broke in my month Lewin, man. That, tells ah, you that. that guy was a maniac. Yeah, he was. And that's the truth. <laughs> he, he was a maniac, and that wasn't no gimmick. Yeah. He was the guy. That's but the thing. I think, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of guys today, and I'm probably one of them, that wouldn't have survived back then because I would have lost my fucking mind. Like, yeah, and I think a yeah. lot of guys from back then wouldn't have make, made it in today's environment either. So it's kind of you know even kill, but well, that's the whole thing. I think it was a different style mm -hmm. base. And the thing was, if you didn't go to the ring messed up, they, they looked at you strange. But it's right. just the yeah, you know what I mean. If you didn't come and smoke or five joints, or took four twenty pills, whatever. They looked at you weird. They didn't trust you. But that was people <laughs> cool and, and now. You know, and then you just gotta figure it out. How many guys have died? Stupid bastards root for everybody. But um, stuff like that. I did. I did have a top guy one time tell me he didn't trust. I didn't drink at this time in WCW, and he goes, "I don't trust people that don't drink." Exactly. I bet so he trusts the fuck out of me now. Hell yeah, he loved me. I think I'm. I think I'm the godfather of his children now, or something. Huh? Right. But anyway, Dr. Tom, man, we got to thank you for doing the show. Um, we need to get him we back. Want, yeah, we, if you want to you wanna come back, and we'll do this all again, man. I want to, uh, when Next Level Wrestling has uh, the casting calls all done and you got some talent and everything, let's uh, let's have you back on again if you don't mind. I love Thank you guys for having me. I'm going to flash up once again, get the curriculum. Curriculum, I said, Dr. Okay. Tom. It could be fine. You can find that on uh, drtompritchard.com or amazon.com, and it's on Kindle as well. Outstanding. That's true. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thanks yeah, again, Dr. Tom. Him. Dr. Tom, it was good talking to you again. Hadn't seen you in about 10 like years. Yes, sir. Because they fired you. your ass and they fired, fired my ass. Rivers. Huh? I don't. But I wasn't the one flopping in the elevator. No, I know you weren't. That was that was bad of me to say. <laughs> no, that was awesome of you to say. That was that was the high spot. You got to get your high spots in. You don't necessarily need to go to the top rope, but you got to get your high spots in. Yeah. But thanks a lot, Dr. Tom. We'll be talking to you very soon. See ya. Thank you. Get your ass back over there. This is my spot. Doctor Tom was awesome, wasn't he? Yeah, man. I want, I want to get him back again. We need I, to. I, he's I, got a lot. He's got a lot of stuff to. Only had a very few repeat guests. I think he's gonna have to be one of them. We only scratched the surface. I think of some uh, yeah. stuff he's got to tell. I think there's some evil up there too. Yeah, I think. I think he's one I of like us. Him. Yeah, he's definitely one. Of, he definitely one. He's a great guy, man. I just had a chance to hang with him a little bit. At, Autograph convention in somewhere. I don't even remember where. I always liked him. When he was an agent for WWE, I always liked him. The doctor. Because he has patience. As he has told us all. The doctor. Very good. Well, cool, Daddy. Oh, man, I appreciate you doing the show again. Uh, this will be going up soon. I'm going to edit this year. Have it up tonight. That's going to be the new format. Hopefully, every Tuesday night. Fresh after Monday Night Raw. Tuesday Night Hymns. Does that, does that have a ring to it? We'll work on that one. Tuesday Night Highway. Eh, we'll see. Now we got. I gotta get your name in there somewhere. Like Highway to Helms with this motherfucker here. With this motherfucker here. <laughs> nah, that's me. We're well, cool, man. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Heaven forbid. Highway to Helms.
Another day, another dollar as a holler to the world. I love the way I'm living, love the Gucci, love the girls. Love the parties and the clubs, love the models and hot tubs. Love the German engineer and set on deep dish dubs. Love the tour around the world, entertaining the fans. I love walking through the airport, taking pictures, shaking hands. Every day from me's an oyster, crack it open, find a pearl. I love the way I'm living, what a holler to the world. Wake